Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. We have a great one today with Steve from Speed King Cycles or Cycle. I never get it right. Anyway, Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. You guys need to be rocking those if you want to look cool and stay safe on the road. Check them out at SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com and check them out on Instagram at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. I'd also like to welcome SNS Performance to our podcast. SNS has everything you need to crank out power from your motorcycle's engine. From exhaust systems to air cleaners and everything in between. Check them out at sscycle.com and on the gram at sscycle. Lexamoto has an intercom system for you guys. The all new G16. It's a group rider's long awaited answer to an affordable comm system. It has 16 rider comm, Bluetooth 5.0, music sharing. It'll keep your group connected while traveling together. This is another great product from the Lexan team geared at making motorcycle rides and travel more enjoyable. Check it out at lexan-moto.com where you can apply the Fast Life offer code, which will save you 15% off. And as always, you can rest assured that Lexan backs up all their products with the best customer service in the industry. Thundermax has your EFI equipped Harley Davidson covered with their high quality auto tuning ECMs. I've been running their computer on my road glide for thousands of miles and it continues to give me the optimal performance out of my engine. Paired with their oil cooler fan, which is available for the M8 Touring models, my bike has been running strong and at a desirable temperature. You can check out these products at shoptmax.com and use the offer code FASTLIFE to save yourself 10% off. And follow these guys at ThundermaxEFI on Instagram. I'd also like to thank Electric Lighting Co., who has your bike covered from headlight to taillight with a ton of LED lighting options. For many different Harley Davidson models, all lighting is backed by great warranties and plug and play options. So you can't go wrong with making the switch or stepping up to Electric Lighting Co. NAMS Custom Cycle Products since 1999 has been offering American made wiring products for all things V Twin and Badlands for over 30 years has been offering the most reliable and dependable lighting modules in the USA, which is backed by a lifetime warranty. Find out more about these great companies at namscustomcycleproducts.com and you can drop the FL2021 offer code, which gives you free shipping on orders over 100 bucks. Yes, that's right. Great products, great companies. You guys should be checking out these sponsors. They help make this podcast possible. And uh, yeah, it's always a good time. This is one of the podcasts that I did on my trip in to California and a big help to make that trip possible was Lucky Days. Yes, you guys know I've been running their seats forever. I love them. I put them on every bike that I get and uh, they got some great bars and everything. So you guys really need to check them out at luckydays.com as well as give them a follow on Instagram at Lucky Days. I'm trying to find something for you guys real quick. Where's that? Yeah. So anyway, this podcast, great one. Me and uh, Steve went to, he took me to lunch, man. And we, uh, we probably had a three hour podcast at lunch. And then we went back to the, uh, to his studio, which, you know, he has a podcast as well. And he's got a really dope studio he's working on. And, um, video I think is either on the table or it's about to be ready on his podcast. But anyway, yeah, we had a long ass talk, drank a lot of beer and, uh, yeah, I think I had a little bit of fun on this podcast. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Here it is. Speed King cycle. It's your boy, Steve. Check it out. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast. Fast Life. Oh, fuck it, whatever. Fuck this place. Party house. Remember when you just had like shithole houses that you could just do whatever the fuck you wanted? Like you were pressing like, uh, like I mean like when you're in your 20s kind of deal. And you're just like pressing beer caps into the ceiling and stuff like that. <laughs> Those are the good old days. Playing like Tony Hawk one. Oh dude, that that game changed my life. Oh sure. yeah, that's it. what they're like on number fifteen or something now. I don't even know if they're that far. I, I do. Sick. I remember playing Tony Hawk and basically going, "I want to be a skateboarder now." Oh yeah, you know what I mean. I remember playing Tony Hawk and I was just high as fuck. Pro skater, pro pro skater. Who? How? That guy built an empire on a video game. Yep. He also did the, the 900 or was oh, it 700. that's right. Yeah, something big like that. Yeah. 360, 360. Tony Hawk Skate Jam in 2018. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 plus 2. That was recently. They that's the new one, yeah. yeah. Well, it ended up going to Skate. 
It, it, uh, turned, it turned into like a game called Skate. Yeah. And Isn't it that on like, your phone? Can you do that on your phone? I think so, probably. Yeah. There's a skateboard game on your phone I think you can do. You remember Tech Decks? Yeah. Those were cool. Yeah. I liked them. Then you had to buy the, all the little things, though. You had to buy like the half pipe and the stair yeah. set and shit. I could never do any kind of tricks with my fingers. I had that in high school. So I was in high school when those came out. Do you and think that made people good at like fingering girls? I don't think I, I don't think my skills transferred over. Yeah. Cause like if you learn how to do a little, like an Ollie with your fingers, do you think that maybe, maybe I never, I never tried to do that while jammed up in there. <laughs> I never thought about like my skill set that I learned while tech decking. Do you think there's actually, do you think people should learn to be better at fingering girls? No. I, I mean, it's like one of those things that you, I still have to do it every once in a while. Yeah. But it's kind of boring. It is boring. It, it's kind of like a, it doesn't really serve a purpose, but no. you know, I'd rather go down on a chick. Yeah, for sure. Me too. Yeah. I like that better, but I, yeah, I, I feel like I'm better at, yeah. If, but if you can like master an orgasm with a woman with everything you got, yeah, that's a skill. That is, that is, that's or she's true. just a slut. <laughs> but me, but I feel like if she's a slut, she shouldn't get orgasmed as easy, but that's not always true. I guess either. Yeah. Cause I felt like, yeah, maybe. Cause you got some, some just, some just have it. Look, how come guys can't have more than one orgasm? Though? Dude, I wish, dude, I don't know. I started like following this new dude on porn. <laughs> <laughs> following dudes on porn. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> but no, um, yeah, I don't, that, that's kind of a fucked up deal. Cause like in the moment, you know, like when you feel that, that, that premature come coming on yep. you're like all right i'm just gonna get this out of the way and then i'm fucking coming back for more yeah but and that was the one my entire existence changes afterwards yeah. like i'm like everything i wanted to do before yeah. pre-come yep was it, i had enthusiasm and energy and i wanted to go somewhere with it and then afterwards it's like i'm not even the same person anymore. yeah you're kind of you're ready for a, like a take a nap yeah ready to just take a little let's just take a little break like a half time I need a nap first. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get a half don't, time. Don't touch me. Then I'm going to finish up real hard. <laughs> you just wait. You just wait I'm for snoring it. Snoring. Yeah. <laughs> By the time she gets back from in the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. That's married. That's married life though. Oh yeah. Yep. That's you, a, you don't got much to prove anymore, but I feel like I should, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like I, I want to be better at those things. <laughs> yeah. I always try to improve form, but then we, you know, we just kind of keep getting fatter. Yeah. And I know that I feel like, there, there's something to getting fatter too, is that like it creates it uncomfortableness. Actually, it, what it does is you lose the ability to do certain positions. Yeah. You're not as flexible. Either. Yeah. It's, it's like every once in a while she's like, I want you to like, I want to lay down in the spoon position. And I just want you to tear it up from behind. I'm like, yeah, well the way my belly's set up <laughs> <laughs> and my, my, my lack of dick, <laughs> my new aftermarket setup ain't going to accommodate yeah. this situation. No, we, we, <laughs> We're this this bike set up for two things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Fucking whatever. It's weird. Yeah, it's you know. I think it comes with age too. You know, I, we're, we're like that porn. We're the porn, porn pornography generation. Yeah. Well, we started it. Well, I think that we we definitely started, but we we're kind of the generation that got to experience three different levels of it. Yeah, in a sense, like all of it. You remember being a kid and like finding that Play dirty boy. magazine. In the woods. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Why are they always in the woods? They, I why are they? I've definitely found some like in the field and like the desert field and shit. You're like, oh, look at there's like a hustler. Yeah. It's like just a titty hanging out yeah. in the sand. <laughs> who the fuck's doing stuff out there? Like who, who, or who got that from the liquor store and then drove out to the desert and was like rubbing one off out there? I'm like, there's, well, think about it like this. Think about, you know, when you're a kid and you're like, you're, you're dating a chick and you're always trying to bang. So like you think that everybody's watching you. And so, like, you're going to search because you don't have a house yet to do it in your own place. Yeah, yeah. You can't afford a hotel, so you're like fucking behind an Albertsons or some shit or yep. a Walmart parking lot. Yep. And um, you end up going to the most obvious places that they're you're fucking in the car. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like a park in the middle of the night where nobody else would yep. be, and the windows are under the there. only light in the park. Yeah. Like, oh, we need the lighting. I want to see your boobs. So. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you could literally probably just go to Walmart parking lot and just park in the back and just fucking, yep. you know. Yeah, you can live there. Time. Half the people fucking live there nowadays. <laughs> they, especially in Texas now. Oh, it's well, bad Austin, out here too. Yeah, out here is the, it's where it started. It's the, uh, it's the where everything starts, right? Right. It's Even the homeless. It's the Mecca. <laughs> yeah. The, I don't know. It's weird though where you, the homeless decide to live though. 
Like I wouldn't like when you're in California, uh-huh. you could be homeless in Riverside where there's no fucking rivers. I don't even want to call it Riverside. There's no fucking rivers. Sounds here. cool. Yeah. Sounds cool. And, or you could be homeless in like Huntington beach. Yeah. I'm going to go to Huntington beach. Well, think about the homeless people that got fucked and like stayed in like South Dakota or something. Ugh. Like you can't even walk anywhere. Oh yeah. Gross. I went to South Dakota last March uh-huh. last year. It was fucking still so much snow on the floor. Oh, yeah, fuck this place. It's too cold. I don't like being cold, man. I don't like it either. Do you think that when you've gotten like uh, heftier in life that the cold has affected you more? I, well, being from Dallas, like we just have extreme heat and, and humidity and stuff. Uh-huh. So like, like out here, you guys get hotter. Like, you know, you'll get that 115 day or something like that. Yep. We don't really get that. Yeah. But, but you the, get 80% humidity. Dude, 100% humidity. You'll yeah. walk outside and then your nipples are sweating. Ugh. See, the humidity is worse for fat people. It is. Because I'm fat and I know this. Me too. Yeah, because I went to Texas once mm-hmm. or twice now. I went to te- San Antonio one time during the summertime. Even worse. And it was so... I, I remember getting there. Me and my friend, we drove straight there. We drove all night long. We drove straight there. We just switched off, you know? Yeah. We got there at 5 in the morning. And I took a shower right away because it was like, you know, you're just in the car for yeah. like 29 hours or something stupid. And I got out of the shower... And I felt like I should get back in the shower. It was like just you, you feel gross, yeah, man. You do. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that being. I, I really don't remember my skinnier days. To be honest with okay, you, okay. I, mean, I never had those, dude. <laughs> I never had any. Well, it sucks when you've had it and you don't have it anymore, right? It's I bet. like you. You, you kind of like. I grew up so fucking skinny and thin, and then out of nowhere, everything said. We're done. Yeah. You go ahead. You're on your own now. We're, we got, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just gained weight. <laughs> My metabolism just boned out on me. <laughs> yeah. It's like fucking done. And I'm like, dude, I, I, a lot of it has to do with drinking. Cause I didn't drink in my twenties. Okay. And, um, drinking once I hit 29, I think I had my first margarita oh, or wow. actually I had drinks, but I just, it's kind of, we were talking about coffee, right? Yep. I want to be a coffee drinker. I'm just not into it. Yeah. And yeah. I wasn't into drinking. So every once, once in a while we go out and we'd be at a bar or something or whatever the place is. And uh, everybody's getting a beer, and I'm like, uh, can I get a sex on the beach or something like that? Because I didn't know what was yeah. – I would rather drink something that tastes good that yep. I couldn't taste alcohol rather than like, let me get a whiskey or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now you're just full-blown whiskey. Now I'm just drunk. Yeah. <laughs> See, I've actually eased up. I'm trying to. Yeah, as 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 I've, as the business has gotten more and busier and busier and busier, like over – it's been, I think, a year and a half now that I barely drink. For real? Yeah. I'm still good at it. Yeah, yeah. But I don't drink like where I used to be like, oh, it's Tuesday. Let's get fucking wasted, you know? Mm-hmm. Because me and my wife's my favorite drinking partner. We'll just drink together. Yeah. And we used to just get fucking shit housed. And then uh, now we're both on the same level. It's like, no, nah, I don't want to be hung over tomorrow. I got too much to do. Well, I feel like the hangovers get worse, though. Oh, yeah. You know bad. what I mean? I didn't get hung over in my 20s. Yeah, you just bounce back up. Oh, dude, you just sleep for like six, eight hours, and you're good to go. The w- the one thing I miss the most about being being young and drinking is that sex used to be so amazing. Yeah. You know? Yep. And then now it's like you just get too fucked up, and you can't even operate. No, yeah. And you don't even want to. Yeah, it's like, ah. I'm good. Let's do this tomorrow. Yeah. We're just getting lazy. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm good on that, dude. I'm I'm uh, I'm lazy. I, I, well, because I think it changes, though. I think in my 20s, I didn't have, I didn't fucking care about anything in my 20s. Yeah. You know, I had my kids and stuff and, but, and I was just working and fucking getting fucked up and doing whatever the fuck you could do. And now I, I think as we get older, we're caring more about what we have to do and everything changes. Yeah. Like it's weird being a responsible adult. When I bought a motor home. Is when I was like, holy shit, I'm an adult. You don't own an actual home. No, I don't own a home, but I have a home with wheels on it instead. And it's not a mobile home. That sounds like white trash if I've ever. It is, right? We're not in a park though. (laughs) But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it was like the weirdest thing, like coming out into the front yard and there's this motor home there now. And I'm like, I'm officially a fucking adult now. It's like, would you not rather just hang out in that all day? Like, yeah, I'll live in there. If I didn't have my kids, I would. It'd be like, yeah, fuck it, man. Like, uh, with kids, it's just not, what, it's too what, much. You know, like when you bring home a bike for the first night and you want to go ride it, say it's raining or something. Yep. But like you brought home a new house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love being in my motor home, dude. It's so the it's best. Like, hey babe, let's go sleep in the motor home tonight. Yeah. Well, I, we, we leave, we went, we just went, um, to like Borrego. I don't even know how to say it. It's San Diego, Bor- Borrego, Borrego, Borrego yeah. Springs. 
and like we just went and stayed in the park just me, like like two weeks ago nice like you know it's like two hours from here fuck it it's fun it's comfortable here though. you have so many places i mean there dude there's there's uh those kind of parks everywhere to take like, yeah mobile homes and shit or uh, motor homes and um but here it's like you can go park it and see cool shit yeah like there's they just built a a, a mobile or motor home you gotta say motor rv different RV. rv brother an rv park behind this gas station behind by my shop it's like and every day i drive by and I'm like that's got to be the worst place to be stuck for a couple of weeks it's like you see the back end of a 7-eleven and we have this thing out 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 in the midwest or in texas called the uh, chicken express uh-huh. which is like your sweet tea house with like chicken like fried chicken but it's like it's, it's in really, the gas station no no, no it's like, it's kind of like that chester's but it's not a it's not quite that. It's like a different, but we just have a bunch of shitty chain restaurants in front of this uh, RV park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why the fuck did you pick this one? Yeah. Like, they don't even have a river. Like, you want something cool to be around. Yeah, I try to. Yeah, I try yeah. to do something neat. Because even when I go away, I'm super lazy. Like, I don't want to really do much. Yeah. I, I don't know what's going on. Like, I think even when I'm away, I'm working for one. Cause you know, you can work from your phone. Yeah. And then I just want to chill out. I just want to relax. Like, you know, like, uh, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm going to go, I'm sure I'm going to have drinks this weekend when I go to Arizona Yeah. and I'm going, I think my wife is going with me or she's not going with me. I don't know what's happening. So I don't know what's going to happen this weekend. Cause when I'm by myself is when shit gets crazy. Mm. Like if I go hang out with the boys or something, if I leave for the weekend, yeah, yeah, it's not, you know, he's just, just don't, I stay away from the drugs and I, but I'll get shit housed on yeah, accident. And I'm trying, I I'm trying to give myself two more years of drinking. And then I want to try to, I want to try to go sober. How long do you want to go sober for though? Forever? No, 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 no. Oh no. yeah. yeah that's so not long. a quitter. Yeah. Right. Um, that's how I feel. I want to go sober long enough to know that I can go sober. Oh, okay. I've you done that. Mean? I did that already. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. I, w- I was sober from um, uh, birth to 15. <laughs> 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 no, I, w- I went sober uh, in my early 30s for a while, so, for, for, a, for almost a year. So, well, like, was, like dieting and working out, I, I feel I like that I can too. achieve that, but I can't achieve it after I've drank. No. You know what I mean? We see, like, yeah, that's my thing too. That's like, I'll eat good. I'll eat healthy all week long. And again, I don't even drink that much, but it's like, it's like a ge- beer. Beer right now is a gateway drug for food for me. Yeah, for sure. And I'm like, oh, I had two beers. Now I need chips and salsa and a quesadilla and some Chinese food at the same what time. What else is in the garage? Or yeah. In the, in the cab. Oh, cupboard. for fuck. Now you can Postmates every, I post, I post made it this damn beer this morning. <laughs> like I didn't want to leave and I could have just walked out and went and gone. And I was here two hours before we even met up. Yeah. I easy could have gone. To the gas a station. quarter mile down the road. I was like, ah, I'll just wait 45 minutes for the Postmate person. <laughs> like, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on right now. Do man. you feel, you ever seen those, uh, you got kids. So you ever seen like that, that movie where it's like, like a cartoon, but they're all in space. And Wally. Every, is it Wally, right? Yeah. yeah somebody just, I people, seen that. Stacy just posted that shit. She did. Yeah. And so I feel How like this is like America, like where America's going. Yeah. It's like, you feel like, like now you won't even make the minimalist effort to do the yeah. simplest things that we have to do to I don't, survive. We don't even go grocery shopping anymore. We got Instacart. Yeah. We don't do shit. I just want to, I, I play with Legos. That's <laughs> what I do. I, I like doing that on my spare time. Yeah. Yeah. I do Legos and then, uh, but yeah, like we Instacart everything. We don't go to the, I've been, I'll go to the grocery store sometimes by myself. My wife, I don't even know when the last time she went to the grocery store. Mm-hmm. She'd never go. She Instacarts everything. She'll Instacart here while we're here and have it delivered here or have it delivered by, you know, she knows when we're going to be home and she'll have it delivered to the house. Mm. So yeah, you don't got to do shit now. So is it like a, is it like from a specific grocery store or just any? It's like one app that's linked to like whatever grocery stores in the area. Mm. So if you want BevMo, you want booze, it's on there. It's on Instacart. Wow. There's Albertsons, you know, Stater Brothers, all the shops. I wonder how it feels to be the people that are driving to go pick up someone's fucking groceries. Yeah. I just think that I would do that job. You think you would? Oh, just because they, so they have like shoppers and then they have like the delivery people. Uh-huh. I would just be the shopper. I'd just hang out in the store all day with their, you got their, I, because you go there, they're walking around. They got their green shirt on and like shit, you know, and they got their little phone in their hand and you know, it's got to tell them where the stuff's at. Yeah. So your job's super fucking easy. And you know, and I just have headphones in. I just be like, leave me alone. I'm about ready to go do it anyways, just for fun. <laughs> like <laughs> so, fucking, yeah. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. I could buy more Legos, yeah. you know, it's uh, 
Legos are expensive, bro. That's not a that's not a cheap hobby. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I don't do those little twenty dollar ones from Target, man. I got to order them straight you from get, Lego. You get the Death Star and shit, huh? Uh, nah, I ain't on that level. That one's too <laughs> much, dude. But I did a, I did a Nintendo, like uh -huh. the NES Nintendo. Yeah. A life size Nintendo with a little TV that was like only like I don't know twelve inches by twelve inches. Yeah. I thought it was two hundred fifty bucks, but it's dope. My the, son's into Legos too. It opens and you can put the cartridge in and lock it in place and shit. Seriously? And then you can crank the TV in it and it has this thing that goes around that you had to build too. And then like Mario <laughs> jumps and shit. It's so badass. That's a, that seems like a lot of Lego for 250 bucks. It, was, it took me 15 hours. Wow. Like straight. That's a fun challenge. I used to do Legos too. I was into that. But yeah, those like, like my son, he's, he gets into like all the different Legos, like the, uh, the Ninjagos yeah. and, the, and the Mandalorians and shit, and he wants like those expensive ass ships. Some of those fuckers are eight hundred fucking yeah. dollars. And I'm like, dude, I'll buy this for you, but you gotta let me do it too. Oh yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Because that shit's fun. It is fun. It's like, it's the one thing as a man I always read the instructions on. Yeah. When you do it. Oh yeah, you have. You to. know what I mean? They're so like, high tech put, now. When you're putting furniture together, like I got this. Uh, I don't fucking need this. This is a fucking foot. I'm gonna put yeah. it on the foot where it goes on the bottom. But Legos, you're like, all right, next page. Yo. All right, separating all your shit. Yep. You got the little baggies now. Yeah. So it's like they made it way easier. Compartmentalized the whole time. Yep. So you're not like playing like looking for the corners of a puzzle yep. or some shit, you know? That's where my thing came from because we got into a puzzle kick, me and my wife. Oh dude. They're We're, the best. Yeah. They're good, but fuck, dude. They're not fun if you don't like the outcome. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't give a shit about this house on the beach. Like when it's done, like I don't care. Like the first one we do was like a Star Wars one, so I was like all hyped on it, you know? Yeah, like yeah. fuck yeah, dude. You know, like uh, or, you know. And then we got, we were like on it because we, that's when we were drinking more. So we would drink and do puzzles, right? So we we're drinking like eight bottles of champagne mm -hmm. and getting fucking shit house doing a puzzle, you know, while, you know, and I love the, the, the Star Wars one was fun, but then the next one literally was this dumb house on the beach because we went to Target and got one. Yeah. And it, I'm like, we're doing it. And it's like, I'm just like, eh, this just sucks. Yeah. No, we finished it. I don't even know if we finished it. I, I I gave up. Are you one of the ones that does a puzzle and then glues it all? And hangs nah, it all? I don't want that shit in my house. Yeah, me either. You know, I did when I was a kid. I remember doing some Star Wars puzzles and I did that and I had them in my room. But I'm an adult now. We went to Sturgis in 20... So I do Legos. <laughs> we went to Sturgis in 2014. Or actually, no, it was 15. It was the 75th. And uh, this cabin that we rented had puzzles. Oh, yeah. And we were supposed to be doing biker shit, getting fucked up. There was four dudes sitting around a table just talking shit and doing a goddamn puzzle. And we finished that motherfucker. So I get down with that, though. Yeah. I would definitely do that. I just got, you know, you know, it's all about the uh, my mic. Something, see, something maybe loose here. We got to figure out our, my connections here. Um, at least it's not your stuff. It's my janky ass shit. <laughs> but um, I think it's all about the moment, right? It's the experience that you do with mm -hmm. like your friends, your home and like, especially doing with people like that's like camaraderie. Yeah. You know, I would definitely get down on a puzzle like that. But like for me, like the Legos were the next level because I'm doing Legos. I want to do. Isn't there a place where you can send your own picture in and they'll make a puzzle out of it? Yes. Like that I always thought about doing my bikes and stuff, but then when you started really looking at the backgrounds of the bike, like pictures yeah, and you're like, this puzzle would be so fucking difficult. Unless you got like a 10 piece puzzle. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> if you did like a thousand piece puzzle, which is. You, the, you need color contrast to make it so you yeah, can figure it you out. Yeah, you got to have the right picture because fuck, man, some puzzles are hard. Yeah. You know, you got all that background that looks exactly the fuck it's same because sometimes a piece actually fits together that's not supposed to fit together. True. And then that throws you the fuck off for fucking two days. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I don't know, man. So the, the Lego thing for me was fun because like, what did I, what have we, we've done a, a few now. I did the, the recent one is a Nintendo. I did a Yoda. I did a, um, I just did Ecto one, the Ghostbusters car. That one was fucking yeah. dope. And then my wife just did a, um, a ship in a bottle and it's like, you know, that's this big. And then right now we're working on a haunted mansion that like unfolds out and shit. Like mm. it's, it's 3,500 pieces. Yeah. That sounds like an addiction. It is a little bit. But yeah. see, the problem is now I have them all on our, um, on what, what is that thing in front of the fireplace? Like where you could the sit mantle? on, is it a, I thought the mantle is the thing that hangs up high or like the thing that's like, you know, you'd be able to sit on if you yeah, wanted yeah. to. I don't know what that's called. Yeah. I'm the seat, the fireplace yeah. seat. Yeah. I got them all right there and there's no more room. So I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. It, it might be weird where you end up being that person that has like, they used to walk in their house and they have like a collection of dolls or something. Right. Or like spoons. Yep. 
or yep. all the weird shit the that, creepy shit yeah because we have other weird stuff like, like i just like weird stuff dude you know like i'm a kid i'm mm -hmm. still a kid so there's this back row at target um when you go in the very back and they have weird shit so i have um it's like pop culture pop yeah really or like think. horror movie stuff yeah i have like these stuffed animals that i got my wife there's these two of them and they have like teeth and the teeth look like human teeth. Yeah. And I, those are like on our uh, top of our fridge. <laughs> and my wife's so fucking weirdo also. We have Lego figurines like in the fucking refrigerator. Like in the fridge is like a guy holding a piece of pizza. And in the freezer is like two ice queens like holding like ice swords and shit, you know? And they just live in those areas of our house. And then we have a whole, a whole bunch of like horror movie shit in the kitchen. Because um, when we first got together, there was a... Like we like horror movies, right? And the, you know the saw, the jigsaw, the saw doll. Mm -hmm. You know, there was this thing on YouTube, and and it just made us both like laugh super hard. But it was like a video. It's probably still there, and it was like the guy's roommate was the doll, mm. and the doll would fuck with the guy, and he the guy the doll would his little fucking fucked up little hand would be like Gary. <laughs> Gary, like in the video, it, Gary. Yeah, and it's a, that, that hand. Yeah, yeah the little white hand, Gary. You know, so I found that doll yeah. on eBay when at that time, this is years ago. And I found the doll, I bought it for her and it, you could squeeze it and it would like be like, <laughs> you know, yeah. want to play a game and blah, blah, blah. And then my dog ate it. And so all that was left was the head. And I'm like, fucking God, you know, that thing was so cool. You know, I'm going to go buy another one. Now they're fucking $300 because of course, you know, they only made so many. Yeah. And then that movie's not popular. They're not going to make more. They're not just going to mm -hmm. keep producing this stupid fucking doll. So 14. Yeah. So this doll is now worth 300 bucks. People say, and I'm like, fuck. So like I went to the mall here and there's like a movie place there. And we just happened to, this is, you know, years later and we just happened to go in and there's, there's another type of that same doll. Yeah. And it was only, you know, $150. So but I had to buy it. Saul was basically that, uh, that puzzle room type situ like movie, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Like they were all like, they could have, most of them could have got free, but they had to sacrifice something kind of deal. Oh yeah. yeah. And it had that weird doll that would come on the tricycle. Mm -hmm. me, 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 me. Yeah. I don't know. They're cool movies. I man, I don't know. That that seems. Uh, I never got into horror movies like that. Yeah. You know why? Because I, when I was a kid, they're scary. Yeah, they were, but they're still scary. Freddy Krueger was a scary one to me. Uh, the original one. How old are you? Thirty-eight. Okay, so you're. I'm, I think I'm. I th I'm thirty-eight and right now. But yeah. I'll be thirty-nine this year. So Same then thing. you remember Chucky? Yeah. Do you remember the My Buddy doll? Yeah. I had one uh -huh. when Chucky came out. Fuck that my shit, buddy. bro. Yeah, you remember that shit, <laughs> yeah. dude? Oh my god, I remember. I remember. I don't. For some reason, I don't really remember much of my childhood. Not that like anything bad ever happened to me. Yeah. That I remember, but I don't like have. I have like little glimpses. Like some people, I'm like be like, oh yeah, I remember when I was three or something. I'm like, what? How do you fucking yeah. remember that? I, I feel like those people are lying. I see. Yeah, I think they are too. Because yeah. I, I remember glimpses of and like bits and parts, right? Um, but I remember being at my next door neighbor's house when they were watching Chucky, like mm -hmm. and we were in my, my next door neighbor, she was probably like four years older, like same as my sister. And so we were all over there. Like I was the young, the little kid there, you know, and they're watching this fucking scary movie. I remember seeing the fucking doll. And then I remember running home to my house and getting my, my buddy doll and burying him under like all the toys in my toy box, you know, mm -hmm. because it was a really scary resemblance. Yeah. And why they would do something like that, it was fucked up, man. It's detrimental to kids. Yeah. And my mom said, I remember my mom saying Gremlin 1. I remember Gremlins 1. She said, I got so scared in that movie when I was a little kid. I don't remember this. Were they actually horror movies, though? No, Gremlins? I don't think those I, are. Those are funny to me. I like those. Yeah, movies. but maybe it wasn't, I mean, when did it come out? I would guess I was a couple years old. It was probably too early to have a kid. What do you think the scariest movie is you've ever watched? Oh, I know which one it is. It's, um, oh, what is it called, though? I know what movie it is. Uh, the Hills Have Eyes, the um, the Wes Craven version though. Uh. The ver the like not they they went two and three after that or something, but they were junk. The first one though that Wes Craven did, yeah, for me was it, it was so insane. I remember watching the first. I still remember watching it for the first time. I've seen it multiple times. I was like, you ever actually seen a movie where you're sitting on the fucking edge of the, like your seat? Yeah. Yeah. That's how it was for me the whole fucking time. That movie, I was tripped the fuck out. Well, that movie was, you know, I, I don't know if it was scary per se, but like, it was just so intense. It was intense, but like that kind of shit could be real. I mm. mean, you know, like I just rode, 
across the country to here, right? Yep. I cross a lot of hills, have eyes, s. Oh, places. definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely. And then you're like, it could easily, like, I could break down. Next thing you know, someone comes out of the fucking oh, yeah. the desert here. Hey, man, you need some help? Like, who who are you and who sent you? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Why are you here? Yeah, like... Do you do this to ever? Like what the yeah. fuck? You people know? live, dude. I grew up in a I grew up in a desert town, man. You know, like where there's smaller outskirt towns and mm-hmm. shit. You know, people like that exist. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That that, uh, that movie was gnarly for me. I'm that was. I think which one for me would probably be the scariest, but I really don't know to be honest with you. There's some good movies out, you man. Remember when Blair Witch came out and everybody yeah. was like. You know, and it was like one of those movies that you never even really see it. It's just the anticipation and the yeah. anxiety yep. of the of the show made for the suspense. Yeah, and but remember when it, everybody thought it was real? Yeah, that was like the thing. That was the around. thing. Yeah, it was real. It was supposed to be supposedly real, and it went on for three, four months that it yeah. was real. And then it finally got said, but "How would that have been real though?" Like when you think back to it, yeah, how would this be real? How could like how could you make a movie? Yeah, out of just some. What, VHS footage. Wouldn't you be doing an FBI investigation with this footage? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you know, I, I don't. Think about that. Yeah, it's like what we were. And then I just because to show how gullible humans are. I thought it was fucking real too. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think is the What do you think is the best movie of all t- time in your? Oh, I don't. I couldn't name one. I I really like movies. Top four. A Reservoir Dogs, definitely great movie. Yeah, that's such a good fucking movie. Um. Oh, fuck man die hard which one uh die hard one it's pretty it's a christmas movie it is christmas movie. i do like die hard three though i like no i like all of them Once, not, die hard two is probably my least favorite yeah it, too much snow <laughs> but <laughs> um yeah uh fuck there's just i don't I man i i you know and my list would change probably tomorrow that was the problem yeah yeah reservoir dog's always been a good one for me though i really like that movie um uh, Boondock Saints. I really like that movie. The the, fir- the second one was terrible. They tried to make it like a comedy. It didn't work. But the first one was always a good movie. There, there's just so many good movies. Though. Yeah, there's a lot of good movies. Um, I would say like for sure, mine. Gladiator. Oh, dude, when Gladiator came out. That's a good movie. And to see Russell Crowe now, it's oh, just yeah, like sad. Like God damn it, dude. I remember. Remember, um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix in that movie. Man, I didn't know who Joaquin Phoenix was. I, mean, I hated is, him in that movie, though. I hated him as a person because of that movie. Yeah. I hated him like I wouldn't, I won't watch that how movie. About, how about Billy Zane in fucking Titanic? We oh, all yeah. hated that motherfucker. Right? I, but, and then I, that years after Gladiator, when I finally watched a Joaquin Phoenix movie, maybe it was like Signs or something, and I was like, God, I fucking hate this guy, you know, I'm watching the movie anyways, but I'm like, and then I finally realized, I'm like, wait a minute, this guy's just an amazing actor because his character, he portrayed a character so well yeah. that it connected with me so emotionally that I actually hate him as a human. You know, like, wow, this guy kills it, actually. The hate is real. Yeah, yeah. fuck, dude. Well, he's actually a really fucking good actor, man. Like, yeah. all said and done. Who knows about the whole little uh, off the deep end shit he did yeah, with yeah, the, yeah. being a rapper, but it was fucking funny. I never saw it. I never heard it. Well, he, you remember he's, he did that David Litterman. Yeah. Uh, I remember like him going a little. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I think know. it was all a stunt. Yeah, probably. You know? I think those, I think to be an actor, I mean, I mean you got to even, you know, we kind of talked about this earlier. Like we're a, it, re, collectively a bunch of fucking nobodies. Yeah. Right. But because we need creative outlets as humans because of our personalities and we created you, you know, we create these creative outlets, the fast life podcast and things that we're doing, you know, yeah. we become people that people want to look up to, want to talk to, you know, and we're both just like normal folk yeah. that are like, like, uh, I just like motorcycles and yeah. like to do motorcycle things, you know, like, yeah, exactly. And, and it, I think so for people to be in like the limelight, like they are in like, a, you know, in the, the in across the world. Yeah. I think you got to be a weird person. You can't, I, I mean, no matter what, ha, even, even normal shit's going to come off weird to certain people. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it, like, you know, every person that you know from different parts of the country, you know, they have different aspects of them are different vibes yep and those vibes can get uh extenuated if you're putting it on tv or you, yeah. or you got a tmz trying to uh, could you imagine that yeah I, i'm glad we don't have that yeah i mean like uh if if stuff started following me around all the time or like you know posting weird shit about me all the time or something like that dude i think i'd just be so turned off to the world that i would disappear yeah you'd want to i already want to in reality 
it's, it's I love what I do. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, like you know, well, what you do though, like with with, with Speed Kings, with even the podcast that you do, and just this entire brand, it seems like. It, I mean, obviously, you run a lot of this through social media, mm -hmm. right? Yep. I do the same thing with mine. It's like social media is almost like clocking into work. 100%. Like when it's I, a full-time job. When I wake up and I'm on Instagram, I'm on it to answer questions, make a post, do other work, but it feels like I'm clocked into this like – this uh this ticker almost like the the the, the stock market yep and, and you know you're on wall street and all this shit's going on yep. you just you have to pay attention to it because it, it's affecting certain things you do and yep i end up i got a love-hate relationship with it I'm, where it's like I'm i don't want to be involved with it that much but you can't really stop sucking on that tit you know what i mean yep because you need it it's lifeblood man yep yeah i uh i've been fortunate to have some good guys on my team now that are doing our excuse me social media oh man sorry these damn modellos making me burp um but and i don't like i still go on social media um from time to time i look at pictures or whatever um i i'm good without it though yeah like yeah. i on the way here i was listening to fucking i don't know scarface or something you know like the rapper you know and said something about my his pager in a song you know and i'm like man i could definitely go back to having just a pager yeah i not even fucking give a shit yeah you know, page me, and when I have time, I'm going to call you back or send me all the numbers that mean letters, and I'll decipher them. Well, that's what originally a text message was until yep. motherfuckers started hitting you with the dots and the question marks. Yep, yep. Or th that stupid shit where it says red. Yep. Like, come, I think you can take that You can off. turn that off, okay. though. My son definitely turned his off for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know, uh, Holden's got a good one that we, we do from time to time, and we'll actually type out the words red at what time and it's like that's the end of the conversation now <laughs> like he'll send me a text blah blah and i'll be like red 7 14 p.m like i'll type it the fuck out <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's 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 phones and social media and all that stuff turned into um very intrusive mm -hmm. and i and and would it's you think, would you say would you say that maybe it's intrusive because we watch some people become rich off of allowing that intrusion no, I don't think so because I think those people m probably would have been that way anyways, you know? Um, you know, it takes a certain kind of personality to do certain things and they have that personality, you know? Uh, we, me and you, we both have a certain type of personality that is to where we do what we do to create what we create. You know, we have to be that way or else we wouldn't have the desire, Yeah. you know? Um I think it's become intrusive in the sense of where everybody thinks that they have to post their entire life on there. You know what I mean? And, and in the fact that it says red, you know what I mean? Like who gives a fuck when I've read this or how, you know, like I don't, I dude, watch I'm this. I'm having a hard time, dude. Oh, you're fine. I'm watching. It's funny. <laughs> um, Watch this. Look at, I have 351 unchecked text messages. Holy shit. And I don't even know where to begin with that be, to get to the first one. Because what these phones fucking do too is when you get a text, like my wife just texted me a little bit, like a minute ago. And when you get a text, it shows on the lock screen. Yeah. Well, if I've read it and it's not, it's not required a response, yeah. I never open it now. You know what I mean? So it just gets funneled into this fucking unchecked fucking death message bullshit. Yeah. I'm never going to figure this out. But like, you know, I don't know. I think I've never it's, seen the text message. I've seen the email thing. Oh, yeah. Mine's, people have like eight. Fat, people trip out on me. And that keeps growing. Yeah. Last a month ago, it was like 200. And now it's up to almost 400. I don't know when it's going to end. I don't even know how to control it at this point. I don't yeah. know. I, I thought about deleting all of them. Do you think you need two phones like Kevin no. Gates? No, I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to do two phones. I've uh, well, because we have a phone line at the shop. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, people get pissed. They're like, you're not answering the phone. We it's need like, an A list friends and a B list friends. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. You I, know, I'm not podcasters a, now, bro. Like we, we are oh, famous. That's true. We are famous now. We're so. multi platform worldwide. <laughs> sons of bitches. Yeah. We have a shop phone and then people get mad that we don't answer it, but it's really not. We are on the other line and we have yeah. a, we also have uh, you can leave a voicemail. So that's people don't understand what voicemail is anymore yeah that concept's lost they don't leave a voicemail and then people don't get called back because what do you think the best way is for someone to contact you with with such a massive internet based company not based like that's it but you yeah. know you have the brick and mortar but running so much online sales do you think it's easier for people just to 
email you orders and things like that you know like well that in in the last year we've actually implemented like certain things like direct messages on instagram is not customer service yeah yeah. it's sales and marketing right because there's a person that runs that side of things doing sales and marketing so if you're asking a customer service issue our customer service line is via email or phone call yeah and we're getting ready to get a multi-line phone system you know with multiple people on customer service yeah so that way we're answering emails faster we're answering phone calls easier because we can answer two at a time now instead of dude our you'd be uh, insane it's it, our phones ring non-stop yeah, yeah and it's not even like where's my order where it's it's we get harley dealerships calling us asking us questions about parts because the tech that went to mmi has no idea how to install a chain kit yeah you know like weird stuff you know not to talk shit but it's like you know, that was always the weirdest thing for me when we opened this shop and the, the first time a Harley dealership called me asking yeah. me questions and I was like, but you're the guy. But you guys wouldn't even hire me. Yeah, you're the guy. You're the one who, you're the, you're Harley. You're the guy. You mm-hmm. should know the, you should know the answer. Yeah. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> you know, like I'm just dumb enough not to fucking give up on this and yeah. I don't have to work, you know? So I, I but we, it's just, you know, and then also like I have a really good guy on customer service. He's mm-hmm. a fucking, he's a killer. He's not like me over the years. I've gotten, um, I don't want to say short tempered, but easy, easier, easily annoyed. Yeah. Um, and he doesn't get that way, man. He's super chill. He's super cool on the phones. So, um, he, he handles it all like that and it's just better, you yeah. know, better for us. And so we're looking for another team member. That's going to be, it's going to, in the next month, we'll have another person on phones also and emails doing, you know, that shit. He'll be managing that person. Like he'll be backing them up and you know, so it'll be a a tag team situation. So that's a scary thing. Like one, like we were saying, they're like the things I want to do, but it's like, I know that's going to make things more. It's going to add more responsibility. And that gets scary to me. Yeah. Cause like, I want to be really good at a little bit of responsibility. Well, it's see, like being, being great at having two kids, but if you have four kids and you end up loving one less or more, <laughs> uh, maybe, but what, you know, like you never know how the kid's going to come out though. What if that kid comes out and you already don't like him? You uh, can't send them back. Yeah. That's kind of what I, I mean. I have two kids and I think that I like, I like them both. Yeah. Um, I think I like mine too. I think so. I think <laughs> there's no real complaints there, but nope. But like when you meet someone else's kids, and you're like, man, I fucking hate, I hate this kids. kid. <laughs> I hate this kid so much. <laughs> this is my kid. I would punch him. Dude, y'all should have got rid of him. Yeah. Oh t- <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I've definitely. I'm not a. I'm not. I was never raised around kids. I'm the youngest out of two. Yeah. Um, and I was never raised around kids. I didn't have little cousins. I didn't have none of that shit. My sister, who's four years older than me, her her oldest kids the same age as my kid. We For had real. a kid like the same year. So, um, the first time I ever held a baby was my son. For real. When he was born, yeah. So That's cool. Yeah, it was cool. But you know, so it's weird. Like I don't really know. I've had to learn how to act around kids, mm. but that didn't work very well. I still cuss. I still talk the same way as Hawk. Yeah, it, I've been at a couple people's houses the last couple of days. I'm like, uh, can I cuss around your kids? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I'm not not I'm not going to intentionally do it, but I talk the way I talk. Yeah, naturally when I talk, I just you know fuck and things like that are are very helpful words to get yeah. me through a sentence. Yep. So I talk well, cause like, you know, I, I grew up my friends, you know, even before I did motorcycle shit were the same kind of people that we are. Yeah. You know, a lot of my friends are musicians, tattoo artists and things like that. And we all kind of grew up in this group of friends and we all had kids at around the same time, sort of, you know, and, I knew that even if I stopped cussing, I'm not going to stop hanging out with my homeboys Yeah, and they're going to cuss because they don't have kids. They don't give a fuck. So it was easier for me to teach my kids what words they are allowed to say and what words they are not allowed to say. And to this day, my son's 15. He'll be 16 this year. I got to beg him to say the shit. Like when I'm going to just be me and him, I'm like, it's cool, bro. You can say whatever the fuck you want. I don't think that I actually officially started cussing around my mom till about 22 or 23. Oh, no, dude. I was like 15, 16. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a dude. I was just a shit bag, bro. <laughs> like, you know, I just I'm always I'm I've, I've always been super anti fucking like just I just didn't do what I want to do. Yeah, like don't tell me what to do. Like and I've and you know, knock on wood, man. I've never been any kind of like serious trouble and shit. I've never been arrested or nothing. Yeah, but I've always been like super. I need to go my own path. And even though I didn't like I, for years and years and years, I had a job like a r- normal like clock in work for people job mentally i always had to be on my own deal like i had yeah. to be making my own decisions doing my if this got me in a bad situation it's my fucking fault mm-hmm. like i know 
And I've always been super stubborn and dumb. Yeah, I mean, I I could I could feel that because I feel that way about a lot of shit I do. Yeah, you know, but I don't know. I don't know, man. Shit, it's life, hard, life, man. It's Life's hard, hard, bro. It's, it makes there's no there's a they need a book, dude, that l- helps people navigate life. Yeah. Just navigating, even just having kids. I didn't have a very present father. What if, like in high school, you just had like a life one hundred and one? You know, like. Ugh. Like the basics. Well, they have life. that now, and they're just trying they to do? teach all these kids this bullshit, and canceling everything, <laughs> canceling Pepe motherfucking Le Pew, dude. The fuck? This is what we're wasting our time with? Yeah, they're trying to catch a. Uh, what was his? Uh, what was the uh, My Pillow guy? They try to cancel the My Pillow guy. I mean, his pillows suck, but <laughs> I had one. It's not that good. I didn't like. I don't it. get. I don't get. Yeah. It's, on that note, like I don't have. I'm happy that. We the motorcycle industry has not gotten on the radar of that yet. Yeah, if they do, we're in a world of trouble because everybody we canceled. We the, yeah. I, I look at the motorcycle industry kind of like I look at the what how I used to look at the punk rock industry because the punk rock industry in its time in its good time was like the anti-establishment, you know, yeah. like fucking we're here because we're fuck ups and we don't want to be told what to do. And like, you know, I actually put new pants on today, but I've been wearing the same pants for like two weeks because all I do is work in the shop. Yeah. You know, I wanted to look nice for you. <laughs> Thank um, you. But it's like, I'm just a dirt bag dude who doesn't want, I just want to be left alone and do my thing and like fucking live in yeah. my own life. And like, if I could get the IRS and all the other things that just leave me alone too, I'd be so ho- stoked. You know, and just be like living my own deal. Yep. And I, I, if we get into a situation, and I could see it happening though, but if if we were to get into a situation with the motorcycle industry like that, it's going to be weird. But so many people have joined this industry because of the fad of it. True. That It's yeah. good and bad. It's got a lot of great people because of that too, because they see it as cool. They wanted to join up and they got more, and they're great, great people. Don't get, like, I'm not, you know. Yeah putting any of those people down that you know joined up because because a lot of those people are awesome but it can change things that's yes. how things change you well, know it, what, what it is in my opinion is basically we need new blood to come in 100 percent. all the new blood it, it gets filtered out it's it's like it's like a it's like a, a, a freshman class in high school man yep. by the time you graduate not everybody's there anymore no and then the way I see it is some people find that, that, that group of friends or that right bike or they came into the right industry or, yep. or scene that, that they fuck with yep. and they become hooked to motorcycles. And there's other dudes that are solid dudes, but yeah. they just get fucked by shops. They get fucked by the local bike community. Yep. And it just becomes something like it's a toxic the place off. for them. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, as far as the brand, I mean, dude, as far as businesses that come in here and rape and pillage our fucking industry, yeah. then run onto the UTV market or the ATV market yep. next. I've always been against that shit, man. No, I'm not into it. I, I, it's I, one thing if like, you know what? Like, check it out. Big Wheel Baggers brought a lot of people into the industry. Now, yep. I think a lot of people couldn't adapt to the newer trends that are going. So they uh, pretty much just left. They went to like the stereo route and they're like putting stereos on slingshots and shit now. Yep. Right? Yep. Some of these dudes go, man, you know what? I fucking I dig this new performance shit. Let's build one of those. Yeah. Let's do that now. That looks fun. Yep. And that's how you're supposed to be in an industry. You yeah. can't like You have to adapt and overcome. You have to adapt. You know what I mean? Like if if who was I talking to recently? I was talking to somebody and they're like, "Yeah, I think cuz we you know, it was so, like so my my time in the industry has been short but long, right? Cuz I was in this industry in uh, like 2000, 2001. Mm-hmm. Um and then I was fucking 20, 21 years old. And then I lost that, 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 that place kind of like kind of laid everybody off and I went whatever direction I could because I was just looking for a fucking job so I can get, get drunk at the bar. Right. Yeah. So I left for a long time. And then when I um, got a divorce, I came back and that's when I, I actually bought my first bike, you know, I, you know, and then created the, what we have here today and, and started moving forward with it, like creating the idea of it. Yeah. And um, so I've seen a lot of different genres through the time because it's never like I wasn't really 
uh, into it still or wasn't paying attention to it. I was still always paying attention kind of, you know, a little bit here, a little bit here, there, you know, still buying fucking magazines and shit like that, you know? So I've seen a lot of periods come and go. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to see how long it's performance period, regardless of like, I know like performance baggers and, and it's, it's becoming the new hot thing um, across the platform, but the performance industry as a whole, like Dinah's, Dinah's specifically, like if we looked at Dinah's, that should have ended five years ago. Yeah. And it's still here. It's still strong. And now everybody that was buying Dinah's five years ago has gotten a raise, has gotten a better job, has gotten older and realized now we want a bagger. Yeah. And that's like kind of where I, why I fall into because I think I did the same thing. You know, like I know you guys have been doing the performing. We've kind of had this conversation before. Yeah. Um, for me, I hated baggers. I thought baggers were fucking stupid. I thought they were old man bikes. Yeah. I liked what people were doing with them. You know, I liked what you were doing with them. I liked what Mod Glide Victor was doing with them. You know, like I liked these bikes. They were cool bikes, I thought, but it just wasn't for me. It wasn't yeah. my style. And then, man, I don't know what happened. I swear one day, just like that. I feel the same way about RT fairings. Oh, yeah. I love RT fairings. I fucking hated them forever. Oh, man. And one time. You? Those well, are the fancy girls. I just didn't like them, man. And then one day I saw a picture on Instagram of a dude on a bike, and it was a RT fairing. I was like, I love that fairing. Yeah. I think yeah. they're gangster. I hate painting them, but I mean, I love the way they look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah, they don't look fun to paint. They're huge. They're huge, and you're painting an inner and an outer at the same time. It's bulbous. Yeah. Yeah. I've always... I mean, see, what when I started building my Dyna um, years and years ago, this had to be 2014, 15 now, because that was in Hot Bike October 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. When I built that bike, like the RT fairing is what separated you. Yeah. Like that was the big dick shit. You know, not that I was big dicking at all. Like I had Hagen shocks on it and shit, you know? So it wasn't like I was just doing what I could, but that, that was like a next level deal yeah. where now it's like, they're a lot more popular in the sense of like a lot more people have them on their butt, you know, yeah. that's like, uh, but you know what? I just, they fucking offer such great coverage. I they love do. that fairing. When they block so much wind and it's really nice. Yeah. I dig it. It's a, uh, I don't know. If, if, see, I'm also not a street glide person. I don't like street glides. I don't like street glides either. I, and I never really have. No. Because growing up. I don't up, want the fairing on the bars. Yeah, growing up, that was the most common touring motorcycle. I think it still is. Yeah. And so the road glide, I'll be honest with you, until they put big wheels under it, I thought the road glide was hideous. And then the big wheels like opened my eyes to the look. And then obviously now we're in the performance stuff. It's like a much different vibe. But street glides is still, they don't, they don't fit. I would... I would rather have a road king over a street glide any day. Oh yeah, I like road kings. Yeah, I do too. See, but see, and like, so you just like motorcycles, though, right? I do, and so I, I tell people all the time, it's like, look, I'm I, there's a part of me that's tribal. When yeah. I get into a bike I like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sold on it, and I'm, and I engulf my life in that. But I love choppers, I love FXRs. Yeah. I, you know, I will own a, an original T Sport one day. That's one of my dream bikes. That yeah. I don't want to ever get rid of. Um. I like a lot of bikes and I even like sport bikes too. Some of those, but I don't have a desire to have a sport bike or uh -huh. I, I want, I even really want like an older, like an early 2000s soft tail. Yeah. You know, that's just got like a duck. I was telling someone the other day, I'm really in the duck tail fenders. Really? Right now. They're so ugly. They, something happened one day. Ah, I hate those fenders. I, 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 I get too. it though. You know what? I like those, the boat tail fender. What's, what's the difference between that and the duck tail? Oh, you never seen a boat tail? They're like from the 70s. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, uh, you got it's kind of like the, it's like straight. And yeah. So, so, um, uh, J and L Harley Davidson, shameless plug, uh, J and L, my homies over at J and L yeah. Harley Davidson right now. And, um, Joe, I forgot his last name. Let me find him. Sodak Joe. Yep. Joe. I don't know how to say it. I'm Joe Milky. Butcher. Yep. There you go. So the, he is taking a new soft tail and doing a whole boat tail mm -hmm. deal I saw building okay, that. yeah so that's the boat tail. i mean it's like i mean it's got to be the ugliest fucking harley davidson ever made but for me that's like uh, yep i love it we just had a, like, like a phone call the other day um so we could do, help him with some stuff but uh oh man see like i hate the duck bill one i had bikes with it though yeah my so my first like, on my bike um i guess calendar that I can recall. I've had a lot of bikes now, but my bike calendar had to start. When did I buy my first bike? 2012? Maybe 2012 is when I got my first Harley. It was a 69 Ironhead. 
And then I went, I sold it, I built it, sold it. And then I got a 90, 96 Dyna Wide Glide. Mm-hmm. Cause I wanted a more, a newer bike, but not, I didn't, I, I, at that time I was just really into old bikes, but I wanted something I could commute on better. Cause I was working 45 miles away. Like, you know, yeah. and I, my, I, at that time I started uh, dating my, my wife and she lived in Huntington beach, which is like an hour and a half away. And I wanted to be able to just ride all the time. And I bought that bike and, uh, man, the first week I had that bike, I rode a thousand miles. I, oh, that's all. If I didn't have my kids, I was on my bike. That was it. Mm-hmm. And then I uh, traded that bike for a uh, 81 shuffle head. And then I rode that bike for a while. And then I got my orange Dyna. That's well, now it's stripped down and it's going to be repainted. But the Dyna that was in hot bike, Mm -hmm. I bought that bike. And then since then I've had a lot of different bikes, but, um, I don't know. Every bike just has its own deal. I don't know. I've, I've, I've two of my bikes have had that, that duck, duck bill, duck tail. Duck tail. Yeah. Yeah. I just deleted one recently off a of, uh, fat Bob. It's one of those things where it's like, if you want to like inspire yourself to get creative and get out of a, a, a thought bubble that you've been in looking at the same style shit. I just, I was, I was hanging out at Mike Porham shop, uh, CMP a uh-huh. turbo dude. And he had a soft tail on the lift that was kind of, kind of slammed. It had the ducktail fender on it. Yeah. And then it had like this uh, billet triangular swing arm that was laid out. Uh-huh. And then, for some reason, there was a set of T. And this bike's like not together. It's kind of taken apart. Uh, he's fabbing out a turbo on it, but it had a set of T bars on it. I'm like, none of that shit goes together, but I like it. Yeah, you know what I mean. See, I like that stuff. I like adapting shit that shouldn't be. Yeah, that's like, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm super into that. Um, yeah. And and well, it's just like the 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 road glide that I'm doing right now. You know, yeah. we took a. Uh, a new soft tail low rider fender and we narrowed it to put on the back of the road glide. Cause I don't like sweeping fenders. Yeah. In my eyes, performance doesn't fucking sweep down, you know, it's, it's fair. And yeah. so, so, so when I build these bikes, I build my visual, my mental mm-hmm. version of the bike. Right. And getting in the performance bagger when I, this, so I've had this bike since March of last year, it's been tore down and like really building since August, September mm-hmm. is when I stopped riding it and said, okay, it's time to build. And it's not, I, again, I'm a, I aspire to be a bike builder. That's my number one goal in the, in the speed Kings to what I do is cause I aspire to be considered amongst the group of bike builders as a bike builder. Yeah. You know, that's what got me starting this company. That's how I'm going to finish this company, you know, like all of it. And I'm going to keep doing that even though it makes my, my wife super mad sometimes, <laughs> but she, you know, I tell her, well, this is why I started this company. I'm not going to stop cause you know, it's not fucking cheap, yeah. you know, like, and so when I did the, the, the getting into the performance bagger part of things, and people are gonna get mad at me for saying this though. I see when I see performance baggers mm-hmm. right now, like where it's at right now. Yeah. I see black dinas. True. Yeah. Because to me, every performance bagger looks the fucking same. Mm-hmm. Everybody's running the same shit. And that's what happened when like when I got into dinas, that's you know, everybody had the oh, fucking see you black dinas, you know. Yeah. Went over to Cook's Corner, went to Born Free, I couldn't find my bike because there was fucking five thousand black dinas. You know, I get it, but like, and I get everything has to start a certain way also. You know, like people aren't just going to come out of the box swinging. Somebody did try to use this part. They, that person know this part works. They're yeah. going to run this part, you know, but like me coming into it, I was like, well, I need to like, you know, be my jackass self and try to shake some shit up and like do my own thing. Yeah. And so like, I'm like, I hate those fucking fenders. I hate the way I want. I, I really love Harley's standard fucking taillight. That's my thing. Yeah. Like there's certain things Harley did in my opinion that I love. Yeah. I love standard Dyna front blinkers. The ones that hang from your bars. I love them. You put the pro the, the, the custom dynamics inserts or whatever the fucking insert you want in them. Yeah. I think they look the best. I just mm-hmm. like, I like stock mirrors. Stock mirrors, the way they flow, the way they shape, they will fit. It fits you, yeah. Yeah, you know, certain things. But in the bagger portion of things, because the way they were made to me and the way that the body lines flowed, it was not looked, it doesn't look like to me it's supposed to go fast. Yeah, true. Or perform or like, you know, be a motorcycle that's like agile. And now they are. When I got my bagger, Stock 107, I put a plus two GP cartridge on the front. Mm-hmm. I did 14-inch shocks on the rear, seat, bars, risers. 
that bike was insane to ride. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck, man. Like, it would hand... I still can't scrape the goddamn floorboard. <laughs> I've never scraped the floorboard one time, and I'm fucking... Like, I literally checked my chicken strip on my fucking back tire, and I got fucking, I don't know, about a quarter inch to three-eighths of a fucking... Yeah. Uh, that's it. And so, I'm, I'm pitching that bike, you know, as best as I possibly can. I'm sure somebody can scrape it. I'm just saying I couldn't, you know? Yeah. But I'll scrape every damn peg on every bike that I own. Yeah. You know? So, I'm like, fuck, dude. This, this lifting that bike up in the air like that, though, made a huge difference on its function functionality in the way it rode and then uh but but i gotta make it like the way i see the performance bagger thing if that's what you're supposed to do yeah it's gotta be like super aggressive just don't put ape hangers on it oh but performance but i was gonna do those carlinis that fucking sweet back oh, yeah. and i'm like Ugh. take your risers and put it on there little, like with some carlinis with some four carlinis on top of that like the, what is it, like that guy that they have that yeah, meme the name, when that yeah. guy's just straight up <laughs> like this Fuck well damn. that's that's you know i said that from day one about the bagger thing is right now it's an easy it's an easy buy into the scene. Yeah. All you need is a bagger and a couple parts and a couple you're gold in. reservoirs and you're in the and game. You're, and you're in, right? But and now, they're still rocking twelve inch shocks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I rock twelve inch shocks, I'm a short motherfucker. Yeah, you uh, know. but teach their own. The once once it became uh here you go. once it once it started getting more mainstream, then the people that had the means to do a paint job or to have things customized, not just bought off the shelf. Yep. Uh, you know, the tanks, like the, the knee pockets like you have on there. Yep. Or like... Oh, you wait till you see my other tank. <laughs> yeah. I got two. That sounds weird. Wait till you see my other oh, tank. Hey, baby. <laughs> but uh, it's going to individualize things and make it to where it's more appealing to people because they're going to see a different spin on it. Yep. And some people are looking at the black and the carbon fiber and being like, I don't I don't see it. It's not for me. Yeah. But maybe when they see your bike or the, you know, maybe mjk's bike or whatever yep. it goes fuck that speaks to me yeah and then you know it helps yeah. other people flock to the thing and then plus when it becomes it's already becoming the uh the prize bike of the industry oh, because fuck, they're expensive they're expensive and there's <laughs> money in it so the industry is going to lean towards that because that's going to keep shops in business yep right well, everybody's going to start making parts now we're going to have so many more parts for these bikes that they can be more individualized yep and not be a sea of the same shit. Yeah, and that's something I never thought about. It was being capitalized by a few companies because nobody else was making parts for them. Mm -hmm. So, but think about it right now. I was, I hate saying I was, but I literally was telling exhaust companies two years ago to make pipes that are going to be accepting the mid controls, and now everybody's scrambling to make yeah. them. You know what I mean? How do you like that? I see. I, I like, love it. I like the floorboards. It's not floorboards aren't bad, man. They yeah. really aren't, but. When I when I built this last one or customized this last one, I knew that I wanted to start pushing myself harder as a rider. And when you do that on the floorboards, you have to lift your feet up to yeah. use the things that you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have mid controls, everything can, is right there. You can keep yeah. your weight on the pegs and still have access to your brake and shifting. Definitely and more control. Like a lot of people sell like the more pulled back stuff, which is definitely nice yeah, and yeah. better. But for ultimately, I think if you want to really smash miles on, on, on like cornering, yep. you need the you need to be able to keep your weight down and not have to pick your feet up to yeah. go hit the brake and shit. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because I because I know when I was smashing corners, I would pull my feet back anyways, all the way back you? on the floorboard. Yeah. You know, and then you got to reach forward. Yeah, to hit the goddamn. Yep, yep. And so like what I even did was uh at at one point I I kept my heel toe on there, but I took the peg off and just put like a bolt. Yeah, that way know. it would catch my shoe still, but I can put my foot down on the back of the floorboard. Yeah, yeah. And then mid controls came along, and you know I'm, I'm not a really tall dude. I don't have long legs, so the mid controls fit me very comfortably. Um, but everybody, in my opinion, everyone's always talking about, well, I, it's just comfortable for me. I'm like, you mean putting your feet out in front of you and putting all your weight on your back now is more comfortable? Yeah, it's like you. It looks like the most comfortable position. Yeah, to be yeah. Sprawled out on a bike, but. My hip don't bind up as much though. I got a bad hip. You do? Yeah, that's my, my, one of my big things. But it's probably this thing right here that creates a bad hip. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, it, it, you know, that's you know, I, I'm 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 getting better. I'm trying to get into more aggressive riding um, as far as trying to do my like. I'm trying to put it together a bike to go on the track myself. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to. I'm going to. And I got to get this fucking keg I carry around with me out of here so I can yeah. do it properly. And then I may, you know, who knows, I may switch to make controls on the bagger, but for the time being, I'm, I'm definitely keeping the floorboards. But It's also probably new to you too because of all the other bikes you've been riding. Yeah. 
I remember the first time I I tried floorboards. I was like, oh my god, this they're is weird. This is amazing. Well, they're, and it's weird because like just your feet, but like how you take off from a stop sign or stoplight is so much different. Like yeah. the way you do with your legs, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like it's definitely different. It's weird. it is it is hundred percent. I don't know. There's I, I've I've been fortunate enough to have a bagger for almost like literally own a bagger for almost ten years. Wow. On one side of the fence or, no, uh, or yeah, another, yeah. and so a lot of that stuff is kind of I'm more used to it. But you know the bagger itself, man. Like 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 this trip is an example, man. I loaded down my bike. I rode 1,100 miles to Phoenix from Dallas and then got drunk with some homies that night, then rode and saw some homies and then rode to Yuma and then did Yuma to uh, Oceanside through uh, fucking... That back canyon shit, yeah. All, yeah, I was hitting canyons. Yeah, yesterday, I rode that. Yesterday, we... Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, yesterday... Staying at homie's house for two nights, so I, I was able to unload everything off my bike and go do a bunch of canyon riding all day long. Yeah. And I was thinking I was going to get smoked because I don't ride canyons like everybody out here, but yeah. I was able to keep up. Well, yep. I'm proud. I didn't pass anybody, but I was able to keep up. Yep, yep. I didn't get left. That's so. all that matters, really. But I did that on one bike yeah, and then yeah. loaded the shit up, and now bam, bam, bam. Next thing, NorCal. These ba baggers are just so modular. Yeah. They can be your your track riding bike to your traveling bike to your bar hopper to. You don't have you don't have a tour pack. I do, but I don't like the way it looks. You got to move it forward. Y yeah, I saw. Yeah, That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing on the road glide too. I just I I, I like the. It looks you know, weird hanging off the back end like so far. It does. I just have a vision of what I like my bike to look like. And it, it probably looks like shit, but I like the way it looks when I have the pack on the back. Uh -huh. But like that big ass uh, thing that's, that I just have strapped to the back has all my camera equipment and all my podcast equipment. So yeah. when I get to a shop, I can literally unhook that and walk in and shoot some photos, do a podcast, throw it back on the bike, and then I got clothes in the in the bags. Yeah, makes it easy. If I put it all in a tour pack, there would be multiple bags because that bag won't fit into a tour gotcha. pack. Gotcha. Yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. No. When you got your setup, you got your setup. Yeah. And I just, I don't know, I, I did a tour pack for um, Sturgis last year, and uh, I feel like the tour pack, when you start riding these baggers at like 110 miles an hour, things like that, when you start fucking around, yeah, it, it causes wobbles sometimes. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. You know? I haven't done that yet. That road glides. But also, road king I, I have is slow. I had a... Uh, a very slim tour pack. So it was, uh, it was like a chop pizza box. Yeah. Not quite the pizza box, but chop. There's an in between? Dude, there's a lot of different sizes. Oh, I didn't know that. There's some that looks like you can put a laptop in it and that's it. <laughs> it's like, why are you even doing this? Right. <laughs> uh, I got to take a piss. For sure. This is where those commercial rigs come in. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I actually could piss too real quick. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Modelo's go right to you. Oh, uh, yeah. How you doing? How you doing with the time change? I didn't even know it changed. You do, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, like again, I don't pay attention to nothing. <laughs> I, I woke up yesterday. Um, yesterday I woke up at four in the morning and I just couldn't sleep anymore. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for some reason, my wife woke up at the same time. I, I went. I got woke up. I go. It's a take a piss, you know. Cause I'm an old man. I got pissed like two or three times in the middle of the night, <laughs> and um, um, and then I uh. I sit, I go lay, I lay down in bed and then I just sit back up and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I can't sleep anymore. I'm going to get up. Mm -hmm. I'm just done. And that's never really happens like that. Not that early at least. And she's like, I can't sleep either. I'm like, oh, okay, well, so I get up, I have a cup of coffee and I watch a fucking movie. For real? Yeah. I walked and watched a movie and it's like 630 now. And then, uh, yeah, it's like fucking, what do we watch? Oh, what was that? What's that movie? I forgot what it's called now. Some dumb movie with fucking, uh. Steve Carell, you know, <laughs> just, just something dumb, something the political dumb. one, huh? The one where he's like the political one. Nah, I try not to watch political shit. Well, it was like a, uh, it's a it was the, the, the one where his wife like cheated on him and it's like, I think this guy's like Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal or no, who was the other guy in that room? Uh, oh, uh, love date. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Something. That was the dude from a uh, fucking notebook. What was his name? Yeah. Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. 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 Emma Stone. Yeah. Uh -huh. I watched that. That movie's funny, dude. I like that movie. And so I watched that. She never seen it somehow. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And so we watched that, and then uh, we came here. And I yeah. was here for fucking all fucking day long. And then, like, fuck me. But then I'm asleep at like 8.30. Yeah, yeah. Because it was a long-ass day. I that's, to, that's something I really want to do. Like, when you think about the, the things that you do in your life, and, you know, you're like, well, I really wish I was this kind of guy, right? I wish I was a dude that woke up 
religiously, 5.30 in the morning, 6, 5.30 to 6. Because, like, I've, I haven't had to, I haven't worked for anybody in, like, 13 years. Uh, so so I've that. never had to That's be my somewhere. That's my thing, yeah. Right? And so I've never had that structure forced on me by somebody else. Yep. And so, like, I usually wake up at 8, and I'll lay in bed on Instagram for an hour. Yeah. And then I'll get up, take a shower, and then go to work. And then by 10 o'clock, I'm at the shop. I want to wake up at, like, 6 and, like, go take a shower, get dressed, and then go fucking sit down and, like, you know, eat a fucking bagel and yeah. watch, you know, see what's going on in the world. Yep. Or go go fucking take a walk around the block. Or I want to feel like I have a life in the morning and not just... I've done that too. It sucks. It does. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, you know what, John it's, Oaks? It's a grass is greener thing. All yeah. Time, Oaks know? told Oak, Oaks is. Uh, he told me he wakes up when he's done sleeping. <laughs> and I've stayed with that dude. Like we've stayed in hotel rooms together and stuff. And that dude wakes up at like fucking five or something. So he's done sleeping really early in the morning. I'm not a big sleeper. I actually, if I could choose not to sleep, I would choose that without yeah. drugs or anything like that, and not like having that like lull of tiredness. Like some people yeah. like to sleep. I'm not that. Yeah. I don't like sleeping. I'm never really comfortable. I don't ever think I sleep very good. Yeah. I do have a bad hip, so I have to move around constantly. Like, it sucks. I hate it. If I'm fucking, I don't know. I can't find the right bed now that I'm an adult. <laughs> like, my pillows fucking are junk. I buy expensive pillows. I buy cheap pillows. It doesn't matter. They're all junk. It's like you look at your bed these days, like, yeah, that bed or a new swing arm for my bagger. Oh, yeah, same price. <laughs> same price. Uh, gee, I, we went and bought, and well, like, let's be realistic. The bed salesmen, they suck. Yeah. And you can't realistically try out a bed in the five minutes of laying down on it in the fucking bedroom place. Yeah. Like, you know, like you have to sleep on that thing for like two weeks to know if you even like it. Yep. And so they get you for 2,500 fucking bucks on a bed and it felt comfortable at the place. And a week later, like this bed is fucking terrible. Yep. And I, and I, it was a ridiculous amount of money. What are you supposed to do with that now? Yeah. You can't take it back because you peed on it on accident. <laughs> you got too fucking drunk just kidding that didn't happen but you ever got too drunk and just peed in the places yeah yeah i peed on my dog was the last time my I wife think, got uh, really mad at me it's funny one of the homies uh was drunk at a camp out and he thought he was peeing outside of his tent oh <laughs> one of my homies peed on me in a tent before <laughs> we uh he, so, he, he r kelly did you do oh <laughs> uh, basically so we i belong to this uh this uh, southern I, guess, I think it's in nevada also but it's a historical organization. It's called um, Eclampus Vitus. Some people will know what that is. Most people will not. Mm -hmm. But if you travel around, like um, mostly in Northern California and parts of like Arizona, Nevada, there's like these plaques. Like it says, like historical monument or historical yeah. uh, location. A lot of those plaques are put up by this historical organization. But the reality of this organization is it's like a fucking male fraternity for drunk assholes. So all we do is go out, which I, don't, I haven't even done it in years, but. All we did were to go out, get fucking shit house drunk, and fucking the people, the the newbies coming in would put the plaque up while we yeah. watched and yelled at them and called them names and shit, you know, and like got wasted. And then the next time they're doing the same fucking thing to the new people, you know, it's like yeah. this cycle of dipshitness. Constant, yeah. But it's cool because like you'd go, it would be like 60 bucks. You'd go out they They'd have a full cook shack. So you're there, you don't even got to bring food. They got breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like, you know, it's, it's fun. And uh, you just get super wasted, but and it'd be mean like you'd be out there with a five hundred fucking guys. Wow. Yeah, like it's crazy. And uh, fuck, dude, it. I don't even know how to explain how retarded it is. <laughs> but we got super shit house one night. We, me and my, me and my ex brother in law. Mm -hmm. So we used to stay in this giant tent. We had this giant like fourteen man tent. Mm -hmm. So we put two like queen size mattresses and like a light in the center. We used to stay in there together. And me and him, we used to party all the fucking time together. And I remember one night, I had, it was when like the Yamaha Rhinos came out. I had one, you know, and we had we'd go Rhino and shit and like whatever, you know. And I remember I woke up in the middle of the night. And I had to take a piss and uh. Like I felt my bed and my bed was like wet. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, it must have rained. Right? Because we never put, we wouldn't, we'd always be too lazy to put the fucking rain cover on. Yeah, yeah. And so I go outside to take a piss and I'm like, go out there. And like, I had no shoes on. So the ground, you know, like sand, like feels wet when it's cold. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, it rained, you know? And then I'm like, Man. and I touched the hood of the rhino and it's dry. Yeah. I'm like, oh, no this motherfucker and i go in there and i turn the light on and he's curled up in fetal position in the fucking corner of the tent and he just starts going 
fuck you. I don't know. Fuck you. I don't know. Like he's like in, he, on another fucking. He, he's admitting to it, but he's just. Trying, yeah, yeah, dude. But he was like in a bad way. Like you know what I mean? Like he wasn't even on his bed, <laughs> and it ha- it was already cold, so it happened a while ago. <laughs> And I'm like, you motherfucker, you pissed on me. He's like, fuck you, fuck you. I don't know what you're talking about. And so I still never got him back. But he's a, <laughs> I owe him one still. I still see yeah. him. It's going to happen one day. One yeah. day when we're like 90, I'm just going to piss on him in front of everybody and be like, you know why. <laughs> that would be the best time. Yeah. Oh, man. It, well, you know. Well, you know, talking about your podcast now, like, um, what have you found in doing that over the last year and a half, plus the other ones you've done prior to that? What's what's hard about it to you? What's easy about it to you? You know, um, hard is shelling out all the fucking money it costs to buy all this shit. Mm. There's so much stuff, man. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I like doing it. I don't know. I just like to create. Yeah. I do like. To, I like. That's why I do the videos. That's why the podcast was like something to create that I could create easier without having another person that i needed at the time yeah so it was a one-man operation now it's not but it was and it could be easily right you could just bring it all back in here and figure it out but it was like oh i have all this stuff i'm gonna do this because i want to create something yeah like i just like creating content that's like my job my job at the business side of the my job in the on in my business I run the business side of things. I deal with the deals, new deals, the old deals, the collabs, the fucking parts design, all that bullshit. But then I, I'm also like the person in charge of what we're going to create. Like, yeah. what are we going to do next? What it's like, what's the next move, you know? And that's like, I, you know, we kind of touched earlier. We talked about like, not like, like when you have more people, you're like relinquishing responsibilities or duties but in the reality it's not about relinquishing these responsibilities or duties but it's like delegating them to people who should be doing them because you shouldn't be yeah and it's nothing in the sense of you're better than them or anything like that it's in the sense of what the things that you now need to learn or know how to do are more important to than those other things, mm-hmm. you know, that they are still very important. That's yeah. why you hired somebody and you're paying somebody to do that. You know what I mean? But your time now becomes more valuable. Yeah. You know, so my thing, like I, I, then this year is when I've started kind of doing this weird transition where I am relinquishing duties of a lot of things and I've never done this before. So it's new to me, but I know why, like it clicked one day and I know why it needs to be done because I can't focus on putting together an event. I can't focus on, you know, handling new deals. I can't focus on new parts development. I can't focus on this and that, this and that fully. Yeah. I can give it 10% this day and maybe 10% again in a week, or I could pay this person, you know, this wage for the year, focus on this, 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 and this, this, you know, now 35% more each time, yeah. which is going to create us another string of revenue, yeah. which is now going to pay that person and then the next person. And you know what I mean? Yep. And it's this like trickle effect of how it all comes together, mm-hmm. you know? So that I don't, I, I, fuck dude, it's weird. I don't know even know how I learned what I'm doing at all. I think that it becomes natural. I think, uh, you know, going through the motions of running a business and finding the most optimal way of doing it, but also the type of businesses that we're in is like this uh, labors of love type business. You know what I mean? So it's so it, it's natural for us to constantly think about it because yep. we like it. We like yeah. bikes. Yeah. So if we were selling fucking shingles, I couldn't do it. It'd be du- it'd be different. Like I thought about it, man. I and, and you know. I always think because I'm always afraid. I'm always afraid of the industry. I'm always afraid of the economy. I'm always afraid of what's happening in the world that's going to create like a a, da- a bad situation for yeah. us. You know, right? Um, it's a different situation when you're like I don't consider myself self-made. I want to say that one day, but I don't think I'm there yet. Right? Yeah. I don't know when you get there. There's a lot of things I don't know, um, but I don't. I, I have all my eggs in this basket. Like there's no plan B for me. Like yeah. this is what I want to do. I love what I do. Yeah. I love motorcycles. Um, that's clear. I hope, I hope it's clear. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm a hundred percent passionate about all like these, the motorcycles and what we touch and like everything that we do. And I, I just enjoy it so much. Mm-hmm. And I've had so many shitty jobs, man. So many fucking shitty jobs that I don't want to, I don't want to do anything else. Like, I don't care. Like, I mean, I think we're being very successful right now. And, and if like, 
if it were things were to slow down, I'm still going to do this. Like it's yeah. not, you have companies that come in, they come in, they try to make a quick buck and, and like you, they say, like you said, jump to this, jump to that, whatever, because that trend happens. But see, I'll just move with the trend of the motorcycles. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, that's why like the bagger thing, like, Yes, it clicked for me that I wanted a bagger, but also I knew it was time to get one yeah. because the trend I saw coming up higher. The soft tail thing, I mean, we, we got one in 2017. Yeah, right when it happened. I was right on the, because I rode one mm-hmm. and I said, oh, this is going to smoke dinos. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I knew. So we jumped right on that. You go, like my biggest thing, I don't want to chase coattails. Yeah. I want to be an innovator, you know? And, and, and I want to try at least, you know, I don't have unlimited funds. I don't have financial backers. I have every that's what's in my pocket and what we've earned. And yeah. that's what creates what we do. So it's hard too. at the same time. I've never done a business loan. I've never done anything weird like that. And I just keep trying to roll our profit, roll our profit like a snowball. Yeah. I mean, it, it's working. It's working, man. I mean, I'm, I'm super stoked, dude. Yeah. When I look at like, and it's hard though, man. Like when you look around, you can compare yourself to other companies. You can compare yourself to a lot of things, especially with Instagram and all the bullshit. But the reality is like, man, I've been doing this full time for four years. Yeah. Four fucking years. That's it. Like, and we're pretty well known. I think, you know, like I think we're pretty well known. I never bought followers. Like mm-hmm. then that's a good thing, <laughs> you know, like it's helpful. Yeah. We try to earn it all organically. We try to earn it out with putting out real content, good content. You know, we're not a fucking meme page. I'm not, I can't get on the meme thing. I'm not a meme. You're not a reposter. Yeah. I'm not a reposter. Yeah. That's one of our biggest things. You know, Mark rusty butcher. He, uh, when I first started, he's the one who told me to quit my job for one. So I did. And then he told me never repost pictures, create your own. And we still do that. I don't fucking like reposting pictures. Yeah, I, I not, you know, I didn't have a cool friend like him to tell me that, but eventually I got to a point where, you know, early on Instagram where, you know, a customer would tag you and you repost a picture, yep. but now it's like I only want to post the things that I curated, yeah. that I made, that yeah. I, I thought about. And, um, I, I'll throw the, I, the, our tags, like people tag us, they go in our story. Exactly, same you thing. You know, and if they want to send, like if, our, if a customer of ours wants to send us some exclusive pictures that are good quality, yeah. like we would more than willing post them. You know what I mean? And you know, like uh, our riders, like our, even our team riders, I'm not going to post a picture you posted. Yeah. It, yeah. They know if you want me to post it, you have to send me exclusive pictures. Mm-hmm. Like that only I have, and they at least give me a, a week. Like, yeah. I, you know, you got other sponsors. I get it, but you know, well, you got to wait too. I mean, you know, like a lot of times, like say if you re like say Simpson, they repost just about everything I do. Well, if they repost when I've just posted it, yep. then people are, it's like flooding someone's timeline oh, yeah. as opposed to give it a week or give it two yep. weeks and then pop it out. Yep. I've told people yeah. that too. If you're going to repost it, repost it from a year ago. Yeah. That shit's new now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nobody remembers that picture. It's vintage, bro. Yeah, dude. It's like, there's so many ways to like. People don't think though, there's so many ways to do Instagram, even if you cannot create content, not everybody can create content, but yes, realistically you can because you have a phone, you know, the video, the video cameras on these fucking phones and the cameras on these phones are just as good as anything else. Now I barely take pictures. I have a camera. I barely use it. Yeah. And you fucking iMovie, you can literally figure out how to put clips together. It's like, it's like filmmaking for dummies. You know what I mean? Yep. And like even repost pages, man, like, you know, I'm definitely friends with some of them and stuff, but I don't, I, I definitely don't rely on them. I don't want to build my brand off of that. Yeah. You know, um, and I, and if I had one of those pages, I would be creating content. Like we live in a content world. That's yeah. what we, you know, we are known more so because we created content. Yep. You know what I mean? And like the companies that didn't create content, well, they're not as known. Plain and simple. Like It's funny when you see like a brand that you've known for your whole life in the motorcycle industry and then they have an Instagram page and it's like 200 likes. Yeah. Or, or 200, 200, 200, 200 followers. Yeah. Followers, you know, and you're like. Well, and you're a big dog. These dudes got their own semi. Yeah. And you're a fucking like, big dog in this industry. They should be trying to, to uh, you know, a lot of people, it, it, it was a chopper thing to say a long time ago. Oh, I'm not into cell phones and, in, and yeah. social media. Like, well, you do know that this doesn't, go away the pandora doesn't go back in the box like no you know what i mean uh, my favorite one is the when they uh when people post the oh make sure you you know like and comment this picture because instagram's algorithm and blah 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 bullshit and my in my head i never say it because i'm trying to be nice but i like to be a dick on on the podcast but i say 
I want to say post better content, people <laughs> will see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's definitely pictures I post, man, that don't get no love. Like it's yeah. a shitty, it's, we post a lot of product stuff. You know what I mean? Because we're a fucking business and we sell products and people want to see bike pictures. And I understand that, you know, but we also have to promote the products because that's well, what say we like, do. Like, I think our podcast photos that we yeah. put on our page get probably the least amount of likes, Yeah, but it's to be expected. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, it is one of those deals. Every once in a while, the photo is really badass and yeah. it fucking goes pretty good. But for the most part, man, like trying to create content that you're putting out, like as a brand, huh. you know, and you know, it's your job. Though. It's a job. Like I got to paint them and figure out how to make it look cool in a yeah. picture. Yep. You know, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy, but it's, it's either that or you could you could have been paying thousands of dollars a month for an ad and hot bike. Mm -hmm. So which one do you want to do? Or you could be paying some dude thousands of dollars a month to create content for you. Yep. You know, like some brands, like I get some brands need brand ambassadors. They need they need influencers, if you will, to kind of be the face of the company because they don't necessarily have somebody that can be the face of a company. And they got money to back them that they yeah. can do that. If I, mean, I like, could do that, trust me, I would too. Yeah, I mean, a brand like yours, Speed Kings, it's... It's been built on your face, yep. right? This dumb face. <laughs> that motherfucker, <laughs> right? But like a, a company like, you know, um, let's say, for instance, let's say let's say that Arlen Ness, let's just say hypothetically, yep. Arlen Ness, you know, the, the kid sold it, yep. right? Well, they don't want to change the name Arlen Ness because then it, it loses all its validity, right? Yep. So who do you make the face of that company, man? You you literally have no options but to hire brand ambassadors and have a team yeah. of just normal individuals out there that put out content to be the face of your company. Yeah. And that's what I always wonder is like when I talk to people about like brand ambassadorships, it's like I am your I am a, a part of your visualization of your company now. Yep. Like we have to work together. You know what yeah. I mean? You have to also repost my shit. Yeah. It's a two-way street. It's a two-way street because if, if we're not building content together or a relationship together, it doesn't really work out too no. well, you know? So yeah. That, it makes me like a thirsty dude if I'm constantly tagging you and shit and you never post it. Yeah, a dick rider. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not dick riders. Yeah. Can't I don't, do it. I don't like riding dicks. No, I can't do it. It sucks. Yeah, I'm not into it, man. Like, that's another thing, man. It's like, I don't know. I see a lot of that these days, you know? And, you know, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm a, I walk my path. Yeah. I'm a, I, I walk my path, man. Not everybody likes me. It takes a lot of energy to ride dicks, man. Yeah, dude. I don't got that energy. I'm, I'm already sore, too. Yeah. It's like, I don't have the, the leg muscles. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah, yeah I, I've, I think, I think what the direction I've led us and, and again, unknowingly, cause I don't really know what I'm doing even on a daily basis. I just figure things out. But, yeah. uh, I think I've led us in a good direction, man. I, what I, my goal was to put out a positive vibe, a positive energy, a positive attitude, um, and you know, to do what we do. And, and I, I don't, you know, I know some people don't like us and that's okay. Cause we're humans and we're not supposed to like each other. Yeah. Not everybody at least, you know? Yeah. We're not supposed to click. Yeah. No, nah, we're fucking barbarians, man. So I'm okay with that. But, uh, I think all in all, man, like I am who I am. I don't portray anything else. I don't put out a different persona who I am on the internet. Mm -hmm. Like I'm exactly that fucking idiot, you know? So if you want to come hang out and do idiot shit, that's what I do. And that's it, man. Like it's like super simple. Yeah. I'm old though too, though. We're old though. Like we, we can't, that's everything's weird because we saw this stuff created. Yeah. We were there at the fucking beta testing. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's all like all the new kids coming in, like all the youngsters, you know what I mean? They had this shit in grade school, dude. I pulled vagina on AOL chat rooms. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. I pulled porn on AOL chat rooms too. Remember you had to be in those special chat rooms yeah. and shit. I, I fucking crashed computers. I know what ASL means. <laughs> yeah, dude. That was uh, yeah. I mean, it's a different, I think it just goes to that generational gap and that technology gap. We're going to be in a huge, bigger technology gap in the next 30, 40 years. You know, yeah, like yeah. our kids are going to see a gnarly technology gap, you know, um, implants and all this weird ass shit, you know, but I think I'm glad, like, I think I'm glad where we, we learned what we did and how we saw everything come about. Yeah. And then we didn't just like, we love, excuse me. We enjoy what we do because we respect what we built. Yeah. And it wasn't handed to us. And now we're the old guys just like that. Yeah. 10 years ago, I was a young guy. 
or it felt like four years ago. And now I'm like, holy shit, I'm gonna be 40 soon. I gotta get my prostate checked. Did you know that you have to do that when you're 40? Uh, yeah, well. Have you already done it? Yeah, I do it to myself all the time. <laughs> Man, oh, wait. That, that, same thing. Same, yes. same. Doc, I got it, Doc. Here's a video. <laughs> it's on Pornhub. Follow this new dude. <laughs> no, nah, like, you know, it's like, man, I don't know. I think I trip out on how fast and how slow things go all the time. One thing that about the motorcycle industry that does, like, it makes me hopeful is that when you see these guys that, that were able to literally in, live an entire career life yeah. with it, like, you know, Ness and Yaffe and these, so crazy. these older guys that – you know, not to not to point out their their age, but they built know, an empire. When these dudes are fifty five years old and they're still fucking coming to Sturgis and riding bikes, just like we are, yeah, you're like fuck, man. Like the, that's I, what I, I want to do. It, instead of being like an athlete or some shit, where Oof. like you busted your ass and you have to retire at forty because you're no good anymore, yeah. and now you don't know what you want to do in your life. I want to play with old cars and bikes, new and old, for fucking ever. Yeah, you know that's what I want to do, man. And then I'd like to hopefully, I don't know, have a a four hundred one k. I don't that? know who's that. This I don't know. My wife like this is a, this is the thing. This is like a we just finally started payroll like two months ago. Sure. Not even that. But like and my wife like set up a four hundred one k because like through QuickBooks and shit, right? And she's like, yeah. So we're paying this much money, and then Speed Kings matches it. I'm like, why is it matching it? Isn't it the same? That's just our money too. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Just put the double amount. Then <laughs> like it doesn't have to match. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, so now I have like I think uh, forty dollars in a four hundred one k. But see, like, that's the thing, dude. I don't got take it out. Are you going to penalize yourself? (laughs) I'm sure I am, right? I don't got none of that shit, man. Like, I don't have a rich family. I barely have any family, let alone rich family. I got nothing, dude. I just got my hard work, and that's it. Yeah. It's weird. It's scary, man. I feel like, you know, that old statement, you know, learning your 20s, earning your 30s, and whatever the other one is for 40s. I I had one for, I didn't even, I never heard these before. You haven't learned, learning your 20s, earning your 30s, and it's like, enjoy your 40s or some shit like that. Uh. But. I feel like shit. No, it's it's a it's a saying. That's real. Yeah, those guys are liars. Well, technically, I feel like you know the idea is that like you spend your twenties in college and oh. in apprenticeships, um, uh, or learning your craft, learning your craft. Oh, and in your thirties, okay. you start making real money and you make good financial decisions. And in your forties, you can start to live a very comfortable life. Oh. And I feel like for a lot of us that chose the route of. We're going to work forever. Yeah. Well, like maybe you would call what we do entrepreneurship, but uh, I like to look at more like we're a trades business. You know what I mean? When do you think the word entrepreneur actually kicks in? I see people throwing that word around and I never understood. Like I know what it is, but like you can't just call your, it's like being, like I said, like I want to be considered self-made, but I don't think I'm there yet. Right. But like you could think it's like a nickname. Somebody else has to give you that. Yeah. You but at the same time, it's like, it's, uh, it's one of those words that's kind of lost its validity because everybody uses it. Yeah. That like, I don't know if I want to call myself. That. I'm just, I got some guy send me his resume. I said that on his resume. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> and I'm like, there's either this guy doesn't know what that word means or he, d- he didn't look, I don't know. Like this is the exact opposite yeah. of entrepreneur is sending me your fucking resume for a job in the warehouse. <laughs> Like, man, bro, you're a contradiction. Yeah. Like this is, I, I don't know that. And that's like, dude, there's like things like that. I think things get washed out real easy with today's, uh, instant gratification culture. Well, you know, when, when, I mean, I'm sure both of us have talked about this many times on our podcast, but when you look at these people, these kids, these younger guys who are getting all their inspiration for, for becoming an adult and becoming a whatever they're, they're doing it through looking at social media because they're seeing Speed King success right now, but they're not seeing the last 20 years of you, no. you know, fucking up and, and figuring out life. They're not seeing the 20 years that I've just put into my life to yep. be here. And, you know, and and we're all getting blown out by some fucking hot chick with a nice ass who's 17 or 18 years old. Yeah, yeah. Definitely 18 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I only look at 18 year olds. Yeah. Or up. Or up. Yeah. 25. Unless you're in certain states. <laughs> <laughs> No, you it's, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I have this conversation with some of my, my, my local kids that hang around or, you know, that I, I don't want to say mentor, but, uh, you know, I try to help with advice and things like that because, you know, again, I'm just a shit bag fucking, I don't, uh, but I started like, dude, I got pictures of when I started, man, I was in a PT cruiser, you know, with no, with one fucking fold up table, no canopy, just getting sunburned at the swap meet. You know what yeah. I mean? Like 
for years. That didn't it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't like one swap meet into a sprinter. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, then I I crashed that and I had a fucking badass Hyundai Elantra, bro. So I can step the fuck back, all right? Hyundai. Yeah, and uh, you know, so it's not, dude. It was a, a years of and while working sixty to seventy hours a week at my normal job. Yeah, it was grinding, man. Well, I've always looked at it like if you are trying to build something and you literally need personal time to to re rest then you you're never going to make it no you know what is per what is what is personal time uh, that's what time. i do in the bathroom yeah <laughs> shitting <laughs> Right when you're answering DMs on Instagram while you're shitting, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, dude. finally, uh, you know, like I said, your old lady works with you, but mine doesn't. So I, when I have to go take a shit, usually an hour and a half after lunch, um, yep. that's whenever I finally go, "Hey, babe, how's your day?" Yeah, and then back to fucking the grind. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude, it's 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 hard. You gotta. People don't get it. Like uh, that that saying. I don't know about your your. I mean, I understand your twenty, thirty, forty saying, but I never heard it. But that saying that, you know, you get in, you get out what you put in. Yeah. And it may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be in two years or four years or 10 years, but I think it's true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I saw a gap in the market and that's what I tried to fill. Yeah. That's what, where we created what we are today. Mm -hmm. You know, when I saw that, I said, nobody's doing this. We need to do this. And we started. And it t it's still building and fucking grinding and work mm -hmm. and fucking I would come home from, I would go to work for 12 hours and I would come home and sit there and work, you know, and I would stay up to fucking midnight, one o'clock working and then go back to work at five in the morning. Like it yeah. was like, it, all I did was work. I would work, I would work, I would work. And I don't know why, but my wife understood. I don't know why she did. Sometimes yeah. I think back and I'm like, why did she put up with that? You know, I've always said this uh, to some people. I was like, you know, being a father, even being a husband at times, the easiest thing I have to do in my life is just work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's cut and dry. Yeah. You know? This happens, I do this, solve solve problem A, solve yeah. problem B. Well when when you're when you're like also trying to be a good husband, a, a good father, those problems require time. Yeah. And most of our problems just passion. Yeah, and, and thought and and getting involved and and uh, you know, it, it's just they're complicated. They're hard they to deal way with. Harder. You know? Because you can't in business, sometimes you can go at things with like a barbaric, archaic fucking attitude, yeah. man, and just say, fuck this. We're going to fuck this shit up. And you got issues in your personal life. You got to like be like, yeah, finesse, dude. It's like ballet. Delicate, yeah. yeah. You can't just be like, listen, fucking, you know, like, yeah. I mean, you can, but let's be honest. We don't want to do that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, dude, because I'm I, like, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm an abrupt person. My wife told me this last week. You're very abrupt like when you talk to people sometimes. So you need to like be careful. And I'm just like, I, I don't consider it more abruptness or like, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm passionate. And my pa uh, my passions of what uh, way I talk mm -hmm. can be misconstrued as asshole or dickheadness. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and like you can ask the kid that works for me, man. Like I, I snapped at him the other day and I, I rarely snap at him. And I, and I was just like trying to this one thing. I'm just like, fuck, you know? And even within five minutes, I'm like, hey, sorry for snapping at you. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know, because I'm, 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 I, I am a nice guy. Like, I don't want, but like, I, I just like, sometimes you just like, you know, you got a lot to carry on your shoulders when you're doing this shit, mm -hmm. man. A lot to carry. And it gets fucking heavy. Well, I've always noticed when you try to bring people around to help you out with stuff. Doesn't always like, work. <laughs> it doesn't. But like the people that, you know, like, like, say, for instance, they see us on a podcast, right? Yep. All those dudes, like, they're fun to be with. And I'm like, I am fun to be with. Yeah, in the right setting. But we're right now, this is fun time. Yeah. But, you know, I'm very critical of it. So, meaning, like, you know, if if while we're, while like, if I hire a kid to, to help run my cameras and he's not doing his job right, yeah. this is all fun. And I don't want it to look fabricated because it isn't. But, you know, I'm anal with the way oh, things are done. Be. You know what I mean? And it's, I think, but, and, and it gets... Again, it's another thing that gets lost. You created this podcast mm -hmm. from an idea, from a vision. And, you know, and it started as this little, you know, it's it's a fucking baby. It's a seed, man. And you watered it and you took care of it and you nurtured it for years now. Mm -hmm. And now we're 200 fucking episodes in. Yeah. You know, and it's 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 starting to provide for you and your family and to create a a legacy. Yeah. Like it's bigger than people understand. Everything we do is. Yeah. As a business owner, um, it's bigger than... It, if people understood it, everybody would do it. Yeah. Okay. Like we're risking everything to do what we do. Mm -hmm. Our futures, our retirements, like our, like 
if you want to don't want to work forever, don't own a business probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've only known how to work my whole life. That's all I know how to do. Mm-hmm. I know how to work, hustle, make money. That's it. Mm-hmm. And it sounds cool to everybody, but trust me, I don't know how to do the really good hustle or else I wouldn't be working. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, but you know, you, I'm, I'm the same way, man. I'm so sensitive to anything that can possibly harm what I've built. Um, anything like if somebody has something bad to say about something we did for them, I'm sensitive about, it. I want to fix it right away. I don't want any to be mad at yeah. us. You know, I truly want to offer the best service we possibly can offer. Sometimes it's fucking impossible because some people are just plain impossible, but I always want to offer the best we can offer, you know, and, and like, I want to do everything the best way because I want to be known of the legacy that we are building for the long term of our lives. Yep. And hopefully somebody to take it over. Yep. Like so this, this is like, like the nest thing. Yeah. It's an empire. It's not a business that could be around for another 20 generations. Yep. You know, God willing. I mean, I don't want to create anything short of that. True. I want to like, it was weird, man. A few years ago I was driving. I drive a lot because my kids live where they live and blah, blah, blah. I was driving and I'm just, I, a lot of times when I drive, I don't listen to music or anything. I just drive on myself and yeah. like my mind. And I think I do that too, man. Yeah. And, and I thought about the expectations I have for my own life. You ever thought about that? That's a weird thought. I want to say yes, but I don't know in the exact context, maybe with yeah. you. Explain. I never, ever thought about that before in my life. Yeah. I just was living life, man. I was just like going through the motions of life. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, fucking this happened. Oh, okay, now I got to, I'm divorced now. Like, oh, okay, my car got repoed, you know, oh, fucking this, that, you know, bullshit, you know, like just living through life, you know. Oh, I just, I think, and then the, like, when I, when this started coming to fruition and like what I started building started being coming something, I'm like, there's, I started thinking there's gotta be more to life than this. Like mm-hmm. working my day to day job. There's gotta be more to life than this. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate my job. I hate the guy I work for. Like I fucking hate everything about this place. It's not about the work. It's not about the, what I'm doing. I was a boss. It didn't fucking matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. I fucking hated the guy. Like he was a prick. He didn't care about his employees. He fucking didn't care about none of the guys that worked for him. And I hate working for people like that. I just fucking hated the situation. Yeah. And I just kept thinking there's gotta be more life than this. Stupider people, stupider people than me do it every fucking day. And then like, that's what created like where we're at today. Right. And then one day I'm driving, I'm like, this clicked in my brain that like I have expectations of my own for myself mm-hmm. for like my own life. Now, all of a sudden out of nowhere, again, it's like, Oh, I like baggers, you know, like it's like, where did that come from? Like I, you know, and I started thinking about like what I want to create here. Like I'm trying to create a place that employs people for one. Like I want to employ people. That's my goal. That's, that's awesome though. That, I mean, <sighs> It, to build a business that brings people in and, and creates that family aspect of the employees, yeah. like it's commendable, man. For uh, real. I'm, tr- I'm trying every day. We try. We get a little closer every day. You know, you got to win. Uh, I, win, I try to win a hundred small battles every month so we can win the war at the end of the month. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I, so like, there's these things now that I expect out of myself. I mean, it's not like crazy. Like, I don't have like these. Like my, you know, I kind of want a few dream cars because I like old cars, but you know, I don't have like these things. Like my goals are not like I want a Ferrari, blah blah, whatever. Yeah. Man, I don't fucking care about shit like that. I don't even like new cars; they suck. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I don't give a shit about that. Like I want an Impala and like an old fucking Chevy, like fucking you know, two ten or, or or Bel Air, you know, so I can chop top and fucking grease or shit. You know, yeah. like, but I don't really. I fucking don't care about none of that kind of stuff. Do like, I want motorcycles and I want like, I just want to like have a good life, you know, but yeah, but I want to create this. Like I want to, my, my goal at the end of this, like when I quit my job and I started this full time, I said, if I can do this for five or 10 years out of my life Mm -hmm. and I have to close the doors, I'll be happy. Yeah. Because I tried. Yeah, for sure. The, the, at one point, the, 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 the point of trying became greater than the point of failure. And then now my expectations of what I need to do to create what I want to have grown. And I need to like uphold those expectations mm-hmm. and like try to work towards those. And I don't fucking know how, but you know, it's yeah, yeah. little by little, like, you know, for us, like going on payroll is a big fucking deal, you know, cause you, that's, that's just, we live in California, man, a payroll taxes and fucking workman's comp and all that fucking shit costs yeah. a lot of fucking money. You know, people don't realize that kind of stuff. They you don't know? like, they don't realize that like for you to have a job that pays taxes, like payroll, like yep. you said, man, you know, you might think that you're a, 
you know, I'm a thousand dollar a month employee for this brand. Well, no. Yeah. You cost a lot more than that. Fifteen hundred. Yeah. And then electricity and then alarm systems and then insurance. And then then you gotta pay a tax in Riverside, a false alarm tax. So in case you have a false alarm at your business, they already taxed you on it. Oh, bro, you, you wouldn't even believe the shit we pay. I'm like, what the fuck is this motherfucker right here? Yeah. We get a, we got a bill one day from the county. What is a county access assessor or some shit? Like for some equipment. And I'm like, how the fuck do they know what they're assessing me if they've never been in my fucking business? Yeah. I don't know what none of this stuff is because I've never done this before. So... I try to call. I'm on phone. I'm on hold for an hour, and then they hang yeah. up on me. I'm like, "Fuck these motherfuckers!" I wrote them a letter. <laughs> I took their fucking form. I fucking wrote them a fuck. I don't know what the fuck this is for. If you guys want to talk about it, here's my fucking cell phone number. I folded it up. I put it back in that motherfucking envelope, and I sent it back to them. Six months later, they called me. <laughs> wow. He said, like, "I got your letter." I'm like, "Fuck!" Six months later, bro, you're fucking down the street, guy. And he he explained the whole thing to me. I'm like, oh, "Okay, here's the money." <laughs> um, I don't know what. So, would they just want to like tax you on your equipment? Because yeah, so they he's like, "Trust me, just pay the tax." Because if you have, if we have to come in and assess what you own there. It's gonna be higher, like you know, because they'll everything you have it a computer monitor. You have to pay tax on that month, yearly. I have what? to pay a yearly tax on that fucking computer monitor that I bought. Why? Why do they? I don't fucking know, man. That's why I mean. I want everybody to just leave me alone and let me earn money. Yeah. Like fuck, dude. Like I don't understand. Like this business shit's hard. Yeah. Everybody's got their fucking hand up. California, man, especially like we get taxed for, for everything here, dude. You know, especially a property like a, a personal property tax kind of thing. Oh fuck, dude. I don't even know. I think the, I'm sure the fucking yeah, dude. So if they were to come in, they'd probably assess every bike that I have. All the lifts, all the fucking, the lathe, the mill, the fucking welder, like everything, the value of it. And they'll, we have to pay tax on that. Yeah. A year. Even though we paid sales tax on it when we bought it. Like, what the fuck is going on here? That makes no sense. If somebody in the, in the podcast world can explain that to me, holler back. <laughs> Dude, I fucking don't, I don't know. It's hard though. That's all I know, man. It's hard to run a business, but it's rewarding. It is. I fucking love it, dude. I love running a business. I've had some hard days, like some just catastrophic well, days, but I feel like and I, I'm I'm gonna generalize here, so this isn't everything. But I, I feel like one thing I've never dealt with because I've always kind of been on my own on my own. Yep, never dealt with depression. I don't I, even know. Yeah, I don't think I have either. I feel like I've always because I've always had some form of stress. Yeah, that keeps me running and going and Yo. thinking that I never have had time to. Uh, to get wrapped up in my own, you know, thoughts of who I am and where in my place in life and things yeah, like that. You know what I mean? I'm good on that shit too. Yeah. I'm, I, um, maybe that's what happens when I got high though. I had to stop smoking weed because it was meant to mess with my brain a lot. Yeah. But it's like, you know, of course, if like, you know, me and my old lady was to break up, like I'd probably be sad yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that happened, but it's like, and I'd probably be sad for a couple of weeks, you know, if yeah. my... When my grandfather died, I was sad for like half a year. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't depressed though. Yeah, see, I don't. I, you know? see, see, I never learned where the line between depression and like sadness is. Yeah, like I've never. Well, I mean, I I think everybody has those thoughts of like. I mean, and it's not like, not like a suicidal thought, but like the thought of you know what if, right? Yeah. You know, like um, but I never had like. I don't think I've ever been depressed. Like, I know that's a real thing and I'm not like downplaying it at all because I know people do suffer from that. Yeah. I've had friends that are, are, are have suffered from that, but, um, I don't, I'm, I'm, I am on my, I'm a sensitive person. I know that. Um, but I don't think I'm sensitive to the fact of like, uh, where I have those, um, those crazy emotions. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just sensitive in the fact like I, I may get, feel uh, attacked easily. I think that's where I'm at, you know? And then like, that's why I hate social media. Mm -hmm. I hate everybody's little fucking comments that they're allowed. To, they, they they think it's okay. I don't, I'm not into it, man. Yeah, I'm not into making comments that you wouldn't say to me in person. Yep. If you say would say the same thing to me in that manner in person, and you're that man, then that's mm -hmm. cool. But let's be honest, most people aren't, and I'm not into that. I just not. I don't like it. I don't either. Not, I. I, I try to, when I comment on people's stuff, I try to be like, that's rad, that's dope, yeah. that's cool, love that. I see so much shit I hate, I just yeah. scroll on. Yeah, I don't say anything. Unless there's boobs. Yeah. Boobs, I'll stop. Yep. Stop for boobs or butts. Boobs yeah. and butts. I don't know. I'm kind of glad, though, that like you don't seem to, like, you know how a lot of companies use like a bunch of naked chicks to try to sell their products? I don't know any. 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would use them too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those like off, it is it, a weird it, uh, marketing ploy it, yeah it's like oh man let me let me get a whole bunch of big titty chicks to come sit on my bikes like i ain't gonna lie like if, if i had an opportunity to shoot a bunch of badass chicks on my bikes or in, in with our yeah. helmets or something i would do it yep. but like it would always still be about the product and yeah. not you know not that product i'm a big i'm a firm believer and you have to earn your seat at the table yeah and that's not a way to earn it yeah you know like i i i sitting here with you i mean this is a, this is a true honor to be with you and sitting here and recording Same a podcast you. with you you're, you're a fucking monster and 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 i you you came here because i feel that i've worked hard and i've caught attention and then you want to genuinely become come and record with me mm-hmm. you know because i you know i don't know why but you know well yeah i mean like you're you're a part of our of our motorcycle yeah. industry and culture and that's you know, one of the things I've been talking with some of the people like Tony from Ramjet and stuff yep. like that is like... Shout out Freddie Mercury. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He does. Look <laughs> I love Tony. <laughs> Tony is... Uh, resp- I didn't tell you though. Tony is responsible for... Part, partially responsible for us being here. For real. So when I first got into the fucking game, we got into into new bikes, we got into lighting. Mm-hmm. And and I the first light I ever bought, Tony's the, uh, the... He was the man. He was the fucking start of all the fucking Chinese lighting. I don't give a fuck what anybody else says. Mm-hmm. Tony was the first one. And I got one from him and I found out where I could get them and I hit him up. I said, hey, bro, I found where I'm going to get this. Is it cool if I do it out here in California? Because nobody was doing it out here in California. Mm-hmm. And he's like keep it the same price and we're good man that we don't have to undercut each other i said cool and we've been friends to this day yep you know we're fucking homeboys to this fucking day because we're fucking doing business the right way what i was trying to talk about with him or i've said to him and a few other people is like you know we're all kind of in the same age range yep. more or less we're the same generation of shop owners and yep. business owners in the motorcycle uh, industry i'm excited because we're all most of us that are real are going to be here for the yep. next 30 40 years I'm right all friends and well, you know, like when you look at Ness and uh, and, and Perowitz and that yep. friendship that created the hamsters and and the long line of of building a motorcycle industry that those guys did for us. Yep. Like we're going to be able to have that same kind of uh, camaraderie camaraderie based on the fact that we all cut our teeth around the same times. Yep. And um, we learned from each other. Yeah. man. We grew together, but it, and it, it's more than I think growing at the same time, but. We did things to help each other, lift each other up. Yeah, and so I think that's what's good about this industry is that we all kind of seem to reach out to each other and help each other when we feel like the other person is somebody that is bringing value to the industry and not taking, not just a taker. You know what I mean? Hundred percent, man. Like you know, I have plans to be here for decades. You know, that's my goal. Yeah. You know, as long as long as I could, I'll ride out storms. I'll change genres. I've been around all of them. You know what I mean? Like I can't think of a genre in Harley's that I haven't been around. Yeah. You know, I'm, if we go back to big fat tire choppers, I'm game. Yeah. Like if I want to build a Vicla right fucking now, like yeah. I'm, I'm, I get, see, that's the thing. I, I think that's why I asked you earlier. You just like motorcycles because yeah. I just like motorcycles. I'm really pro Harley. Like yeah. I don't really care about the other stuff. Like I know everybody's all the Indian challenger thing, but I don't fuck really give a guys. fuck. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I'd rather fucking deal with 35 years of the same bike than one year of this bike. Yeah. But, um, but I guess that was the same way people looked at the soft tail. Right. So, but I just, I'm super pro Harley. I love Harley. Yeah. Um, and I, if we switch to fat tire, fat fucking 300 series fucking choppers again, fuck yeah i'm game because guess what i didn't have any money to build one then and i do have a little bit of money now yeah and i will totally build the as cool as i can build one yeah you know like i have a big dog right now with a 280 on the rear and you could it hasn't have a motor in transit it but you can balance the bike off the kickstand just off the fucking rear tire because it's so fat i'm like i'm totally cool with that shit you know yeah. i like it all i like harleys i like motorcycles and i'll roll with what we have to do because for me it's a new challenge yeah you know what i mean like i like viklas i think they're fucking dope like i wanted my homeboy hernan he's gonna engrave the fucking whole entire bike dude you know like we're gonna I see w- you in mine in season three fuck yeah dude if they let me i'm <laughs> down but you know like i would love to have one yeah because i like motorcycles you know and i'll ride it like i'm building a chopper like there's no reason I'm choppers don't make me any fucking money. I'm not going to start, start selling fucking chopper yeah. parts because I don't really want to deal with that, but I like choppers. I've always wanted to go. I mean, I, I'm super pro Harley as well, but I have like now that the Harley has the adventure bike, I've actually wouldn't would love to have one of those, but I, I also like when I bought my road glides outside right now, like I was considering heavily going the BMW route. 
because of the, the those. traveling aspect. I would do that. But I, then I'm like, well, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a market like exactly. a paint market. I don't. There's nothing. I can there's do. not a market for those. Yeah. There's not a market for any other bike. Indians market is growing. Yeah. But it's never. I, I'm not gonna say never. Because you never know, but I have very high doubts it'll ever reach the market of Harley. Yeah, for sure. You know, you see a lot of great marketing from in, from Indian. You know, you see a lot of deals because they won the fucking Laguna Seca. You know, yeah. We see a lot of shit like that now, but the reality is, is there's like eight Indian dealerships in the whole country. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you don't. You're seeing the nine people posting on the Indian challenger hashtag. That's why you see them so much. Like there's, there's not, there's nothing out there in, in, a, in well, you know, like that the, respect. The other thing is like when they were, um, when they were victory, you know, Polaris, yep. they fucked a lot of dealers. I heard over. that. I heard that. Yeah. I don't know what that deal was, but I heard, I'd recently heard the same thing. Yeah. They fucked a lot of people and left them high and dry on things. Oh, maybe it was that clubhouse talk we were talking about. Yeah. Is that what we talked? Yeah. Might've been. Yeah. You know, so it's like with Indian, like, They've got a lot. They've got not only do they have like existing strong, pri like not not private so, but like like say for instance Dallas, we have Rick Fairless Strokers Dallas. Yeah, he was a huge victory seller, and then he got stuck with some fucking ridiculous bills, and things that he couldn't do anymore because they just dropped the ball with him. I don't know the details. That's why I can't. I, I, well, forgot. I heard they stopped making the parts, yeah, so you I can't get anything yeah, fixed. Yeah, I forgot what it was in specifically because he was on a podcast with my buddy Danger Dan, uh -huh. and he explained it very well, and I was like, fuck, I didn't think about that. Wow. And they come to talk to other people in the country that were in the same boat of selling bikes. Yep. Ness, they got fucked. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, that happens, and then, like, it's not necessarily the Indian itself's fault, but it's because of the backing company behind Indian which now these people don't want to fuck with them anymore because of that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Wild, man. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not into it. I think it's an ugly bike. Thank I don't you. give a fuck. It, you know what? It, <laughs> I seen, what did I see? I seen a meme. I'm not a meme person, but I did see a meme and it was like a road glide and it looked like a fucking you know, shark. Like, like yeah. A, and then it had like Indian challenger and it had like a one eyed, like, <laughs> Shark, like you know, like, like a cyclops, yeah, like a shark. cyclops caveman shark, like yeah. cartoon. And I was like, yeah, that's what it, yeah. yeah, that's about right. I mean, I don't, I can't, I don't, the fairing doesn't bother me. You know, where I get lost is the section right behind the seat, like where Harley's got the panel, you know, the fucking panel right there, you know, and, and the bags kind of overlap it. That section on the Indian Challenger loses it all. Yeah, for me. it's like there's. It's like when you take a panorama photo and then you have a stretched yeah, one right there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, I never thought about that. that yeah, exactly. You like jumped a little bit and just kind of dragged yeah. the photo a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I'm a very aesthetic person. Like, I yeah. has to, like, every... Fuck, dude, doing these bikes, man. It's like my... I, I don't have OCD about anything else in my life besides bikes. Yeah. I'm a fucking disaster, dude. Like, yeah. I'm a wreck. I don't... You know, like, it, I don't even... If I didn't have my wife, dude, it, I would be just... I'd live at the shop, probably. You know what yeah. I mean? And... It would be ridiculous, but I, my OCD with bikes, like I'll buy parts and I'll install it and I'll look at it and then I pull that part off because it doesn't look right, uh -huh. you know, and, I, and I'll and i buy three different parts like from different manufacturers of the same thing to get them here all at the same time so I can fit things up and see yep. which one is going to look the best. You know what I mean? And, and function properly. Mm -hmm. It's, ah, uh, that's the only thing I don't. Yeah, there's like there's there's so much to it, man. Like it's it's not as cut and dry. Well, as, there's uh, two levels now. Yeah, there's bike builders and there's bike assemblers. Yeah, I'm definitely more. Well, I always like to say I'm a customizer. That's a good word. Because, That's a fancy assembler word. Yeah, because assembler just feels like assembler would be like, in my opinion, bolt like you're bolt just on. taking something. There's no thought to it. Yeah, customizing adds like the thought to it. It adds like the, the, the vision yeah. of taking things and putting it on and making it right. But, but uh, you do all the paint stuff. Well, that's that too. But like when I'm, f when I'm building, there you go. When I've built or customized bikes in my past, every part that I buy is about how it works with the entire project. Not yeah. because I like those floorboards. I like those grips. Yep. I like those wheels. It's making a decision. Which one do I like the most? And that's the one that goes uh -huh. if they don't work together. Yep. You know what I mean? And so, you, I've always said that like a lot of people, there's levels to like customizing bikes. And 100%. I think there's that level one is like, is what I've always called the customer's bikes. The guys that just buy the shit and throw it on in the garage yep. and they have a decent looking bike. It's usually like a black bike with like yeah. a colored part, like a, a gold forks yeah. or not forks, but like pegs and little yeah. accents. It's a good looking bike, 
Yeah, but that's where we if, all start. If, if I build that as a shop, oh no, come on, man! Like I would laugh at you. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> I got to do more than that. Yeah, well, that, yeah. I mean, that's where I started. You know, it's not. It's not. And that's like I don't want to portray that I'm like uh, this stuck up fuck. Hey, hey, Steve is just stuck up with the motorcycles. You know, yeah. like fucking I totally started there. Like that's what I did. I, I that's all what I could afford. Yeah. And I built this to try to help me afford more and to build do better. And every bike, I just try to do better. That's yep. not my goal. Do better, make more custom items. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if it's a built bike, a custom built bike, in my eyes, it has to have custom built parts. Well, that, that could be one piece. Mm -hmm. Be one part, the dash on my soft tail. You know how many times people are, hey, when, when are you going to make those to sell? Never. I'm never going to make those to sell. Mm -hmm. Because I was the only one that ever had that. You yeah. know, like, it was done proper. And I don't want to sell this, you know, because I want my bike to be the only one with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, um, like the, you know, you saw on the, the FXR exhaust bracket fucking, yeah. you know, and then the, 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 uh, remote reservoir brackets and stuff on the FXR. Yeah. We only made those two pieces in the one bracket. That's it. Yeah. We're not going to do anymore ever. Somebody already asked me, Hey, can you make me those reservoir mounts? I said, no, mm -hmm. we only made the two. <laughs> you know, that's it because it's a custom built bike. Yep. You know, it's not a lot. And then like, there's way, there's way people out there doing way more custom. Look, look at Oliver. Yeah. I mean, that guy, dude. that fucking low rider he built. Oh uh, my God. You know, that dude, he builds custom, so much custom shit on the bikes, man. He's a super inspiration. I've always loved all his bikes, man. He's a mm. super rad dude. Have, have you done a podcast with him? Yeah, too. Oh, okay. Mm. Well, I got to listen to those then. I didn't know that. But, um, you got, yeah, he's a fucking maniac, dude. You know, like, I, 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 those, those kind of people like I aspire to be on that level yeah you yeah. know what I mean and uh, I don't know if I have the skill set that dude's uh, he's a prodigy man because he's one of those guys that did, got into it young mm -hmm. and he just kind of uh, he just he's he's never seemed like the kind of guy that was in the limelight of like no. the, the social medias and shit he yep. was just the guy that like showed up to born free with this badass bike with a fucking Doberman pincher yep yep on the side of exactly. the gas tank you know yeah he's such a nice guy he is He's an amazing individual. He's, uh, he stayed at my house once, and then, uh, you know, he did a podcast at the shop. He, he travels a lot. So yeah. I was uh, intentional on talking to him again this weekend, but I think he's on his way back from Daytona right now. Yeah. Did you and see Brad got in a car accident? Brad. Boosted Brad. Uh-uh, he did? Head on. Is he okay? Yeah, everybody's okay. Fuck. I saw this morning when I woke up, fucking he, him in his truck pulling his trailer. Dude, I've been on, like, this this morning, I haven't. I've, I don't even know what's going on in the world. Yeah, <laughs> I right. Feel, no, I was not. The, the... His truck is totaled. Mm -hmm. uh, bikes fell over in the trailer, but they don't look completely crazy damaged. But the lady who hit him, totaled. But he said everybody's okay. Everybody just banged up. But yeah, I guess what I read in his caption was that she turned in front of them, realized what she did, and tried to go back. And instead of Tim T-boning her, they did head on. I was mm. like, what the fuck, man? That's wild. Yeah. That, I'm glad he's okay. Yeah. What a trip, man. I was just going from coming back from Daytona, that shit, yep. you know, like, have you ever done a Daytona one? Mm-hmm. I never, see, I never done any of those faraway shows. You, you're not missing anything. It doesn't look like I am really, to be honest. Dude, the Daytona, like, so all, all It looks my, fun this year because they're, they're, nobody's all doing the shit. There. Yeah. So this year was, I think was, if I was ever going to miss, wanted to be, it would have been this year because a lot of my close friends were there. Yeah. And uh, because I've talked so much shit about it leading up to it, that everybody was constantly doing lives at me. Yeah. Like, where's Jace at? Where's the, you know, and then all the homies are sending me pictures of them all sitting out behind the house getting fucked up and going with throwing middle fingers at me, just, just talking shit. And it, yeah. it's like, I'm, I wish I was there for that. But, you know, I, I, I got a close friend that does a camp out there. So I ride to that. Yep. And then I got another close friend, Jason from Speed Metal Built. He does, a show there an indoor show that i actually enjoy going to yeah and they're on that's twice in florida i can't do anything else in florida i've never been to florida you ain't missing anything i've never been last year we it's in, a big motorcycle state though yeah my, my my good friend lives there now um but uh last year we traveled you know halfway across the country mm -hmm. and then this year we got to go at least to south dakota and maybe a little further I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll drop all the way down and come visit you in Texas. Yeah. There's a lot of good things that go on. I mean, last year was the first time I ever went to New York in my life. Yeah, I Rode out there yeah. to that for uh, Indian Larry's Block Party. And I fucking, I love, I love the entire country, man. I, I really couldn't tell you 
I think that like per square mile, you have more of everything you want to do in California. Yeah. But there's something about the East also Coast. It costs more per square mile. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> there's something about the East Coast. There's something about Chicago and, and Milwaukee when I went to there. It's all spots, yeah. Dude, I, I've, I enjoy There's it. culture, man. Yeah. I've been watching this show on Netflix. It's like the uh, evolution of hip hop. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty sweet. So, because like going back, it's visiting different artists and it's visiting back in the day when it began and all this stuff. And it's like talking about East Coast, West Coast. It's talking about, you know, all this shit, you know, Harlem, fucking blah, 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 yeah. you know, uh, Georgia, you know, like all the different states kind of started their own little style, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, like everything. And it's like every, you know, I haven't really got to experience the United States as much as most people. And in fact, last year, was the first time I've actually got to leave and go like as far as I've ever gotten. Like I went to like, I don't know, eight states last year. And before that, my record was two, I think or yeah. three, maybe three. Well, JL Harley's, where is that? South at? Dakota. South Dakota. Yeah. So we did that and we turned a turnaround trip. We went straight there, like straight back. Yeah. But, um, you know, so, but it was fun. And you get to see shit. Like I never, you know, I got to see the Mount Rushmore. That's weird. Yeah. You know, that's fucking weird. And then you sit there and you're like, and it was right when COVID started, we left the day Co the California got shut down mm. and uh, we got shut down. We were already in Vegas. And I asked my wife, when we turn around, she said, no, you're good. Just go. Yeah. So, uh, and me and the guy that works for me, Dylan, we went, we were gone for four days, but we went to Mount Rushmore and you're like, look at Mount Rushmore. Like, Motherfuckers did this by hand. Yeah. Like what the fuck? We can't do shit by hand anymore. What yeah. happened to this country? You know what I mean? Like we don't, nobody can do anything by hand like that anymore. It's a fucking trip, but uh, you know, I feel I'm gonna carve a face in that fucking mountain. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Fuck it, let's do four. <laughs> Hold my beer. <laughs> I don't know, man. Some it, other dudes around the corner is like, "Fuck those dudes." I'm building a fucking dude on a horse, right? <laughs> how, how long before those fucking come down, though? How you, you think, dude? Can't you can't take that down? What do you mean? There's no way they take that. Down. Oh, but what do you mean? The cancel this, cancel that, cancel goddamn, they canceled a skunk, bro. Yeah, well. I'm tripped out right now by this fucking shit, dude. Like, it fucking blows my mind that this is what we're worried about. Well, we need real problems. And I definitely agree that that goddamn fucking skunk was rapey. Yeah. <laughs> he was a rapey-ass skunk, man. But fuck, dude. Like, really? That's what we're... Yeah, but that's all, all that's doing is setting up kids to understand the different types of personalities that are, that yeah, are going to be Yeah, don't fuck with French people. <laughs> yeah, fuck, <laughs> fuck the French, right? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, think about it. Think about all the Looney Tunes characters and shit that have, like, different personalities yeah and that's what that's what you're showing people is the personalities of who it kind of sucks because it makes it be like okay that personality is the bad guy yeah but i mean at the same time you like as a kid like you don't have that much interaction with all these other adults and people that you can see you like less and less as if you kids yeah. grow up less and less interactions man. now you just now now it's not that rapey fucking uh a uh, skunk. Now it's like some weirdo in fucking TikTok or oh, yeah. or on uh, Twitch playing video games. Dude, I don't get any of this shit. That ha I don't. I don't understand. What's it's funny how on. like grown dudes do video game channels for kids to watch and get massive amounts of YouTube money. Yeah, what is that's weird. Uh, what, I think if you're an adult and you play video games in that sense like that, it's weird. Yeah, I mean, trust me, I love playing video games, but to the point where I'm a video it. Yeah. I don't uh, do that shit. I haven't had a video game system since um, Xbox 360. Yeah. That was the last system I had. It's a while back. Yeah, I'm good. That's, I mean, I'm going on almost so, you know why 10 I, years. Here's the deal. I've always had certain certain vices, if you will. That's the problem. That was my vice. That I could get away yeah. and not think about this the, this, this business. Yeah. And so for a while, it was golf. I used to go play golf I used to play golf. And I stopped because once I got started making more money, I could play more golf. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And next Golf's thing, expensive. You know, yeah. And next thing you know, you're like, fuck it. I'm done for the day. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go play golf. It's noon. Yeah. I'll go play two rounds somewhere. And next thing you know, you're like, fuck, man, I can't do that. I have crazy tennis elbow. For real? Yeah, because I broke my elbow. Like, my arm doesn't go straight. Like, you can see how curved it is. Yeah. And so uh, it creates crazy tennis elbow, and it got to the point where every time I'd play golf, it would fucking flare up my ligament, and I just fucking... I hadn't played golf in like seven, eight years, and I went to uh, Phoenix earlier last year, right before COVID hit, and I had never been to Top Golf, and so I was like, I used to be able to hit pretty, pretty good and yeah. far, so I thought... I'm going to do this. I threw my fucking shoulder out for about <laughs> two weeks. Fuck, yeah. Oh, yeah. This will get so bad, I can't put my phone in my face. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> holding the phone like this and shit, dude. It was terrible. I haven't played in a long time. I still have my clubs. I haven't played in a long time now, but I do want to do that top golf. I've never done that either. 
Yeah, it's. I guess they're building one out here. Yeah, somewhere. they're everywhere out out east. Yeah, I guess they're. My wife said they're building one like Temecula or something. Mm, or makes sense. Yeah, so I'll go try. I mean, but yeah, so like I, you know, for me, like the that was golf for a while, and then, you know, the video game thing. Like when you get like a game that just like has a story and it's a long game, yeah. and you're playing it forever. It's like I'm not playing it for fucking forty hours straight, but. When you come home at night, and I just like I don't want to think about any of the shit going on. Yeah, I just want to focus on this, like a like the Legos. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. You I know, go like Assassin's Creed. Oh fuck, dude! I love that, that game. game. Was gnarly. I I've, I've game. played. I've beaten them all. Um, Assassin's Creed, getting those dungeon dragon type games. Mm-hmm. Not not the. See, ones. that's my fault. I used to play World of Warcraft. See, I never got those those games that were like computer games. <sighs> I never really got into the computer ones, but like. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. The bro. Witcher, you know, the TV show on Netflix. Oh, yeah, that game. That, that, that game cool. is the one of the best games of all time. Oh, I'd play that. It's like, long. It's the got Dungeon and Dragon Time is my favorite. Yeah, I would like. I would totally. But that's, yeah, got, I used to play Warcraft. Dude, they got it's, boobs in games now, bro. Oh, I like boobs. I like game boobs. Yeah, it's like I'm looking. Yeah. Oh, hey, what's up? So it's like, uh, <laughs> it's weird. Like, you know, I'm looking around. Like, is this okay? <laughs> right. I feel like this. You know, like game is not. I don't know. It's like. But I guess they got that channel for porn too, where you got the anime porn and all that. They stuff. have anime porn, all kinds of shit, dude. Do they have vir- so my son has a virtual reality thing? Does he have virtual reality porn? Do you think? I think they do. I asked him on day one when I went and played it with him. That shit made me sick. I almost threw up. But I was like, they got porn for this. And he's he just like, oh, but he's like fifteen, so who knows? Oh, he definitely knows. Yeah, he knows. And they definitely do. Oh, that'd be cool. But it's like it's weird because if you don't have the VR goggles, then the video's weird as shit looking. It's like two two of the same screen. <laughs> Because it's separating your eyes from seeing through the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know if I'd want to jerk off with fucking goggles on. Well, you got to have those things on your hands, don't you? I don't think you have to have those on. I think uh, the VR that they're talking about is possibly like the one you put your phone in. Oh, he's got that Oculus or whatever uh, thing. Yeah. He, yeah, he's talking about. Yeah, he's got all the bullshit. I don't know. I'm not, I can't do it, man. I can't do video games. I'm not into it. I like... I have, you know what I got? I got San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Ooh, on my on my iPad. That was a good one. And then like I'm playing on the iPad screen though with the controls on the screen, and I'm like, I need the the Bluetooth controller. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm gonna buy the Bluetooth controller. And I'm like, no, I'm not, because my wife's gonna talk shit to me. I'm gonna be, and uh, I'm so done. So you know you like them, and you have to avoid them. I have to, yeah. No, 100. Yeah. percent I'm a fucking nerd. Well, see, if I had a if I had like a house where. I had like real machinery type tools in it, like a lathe and shit. I'd probably like go out there and do that shit more than anything. Yeah, that's fun. You know what I mean? Just fuck with like that and take some metal and turn You'd it. Be into amazed it. how much you use a lathe once you have it. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet. just got mine last year. Mm-hmm. I use it almost every fucking day Damn. for something. I don't even know why I'm using it sometimes. <laughs> you know, like it's a. I just got the mill like two or three weeks ago. Uh huh. So an old bridge port, but. A, I used to run one of those back in the day, so I know how to do it, but it's amazing how much you'll use something like that when you didn't think you would use it so much. Yeah. Every little thing I find I have to use on the lathe. I don't know. I have to pee again, though. I probably need to wrap it up, man, because uh, I, I got to get to Santa Clarita. We probably shouldn't have had a three-hour lunch. Yeah, but it was a fun one, man. It was a fun we one. We got to really talk and get to know each other and shit. Yeah, we got to do another podcast. Well, you got next time you come back, we're going to do a podcast on our podcast. Okay, yeah. But you can have the audio too, and just or video. We can we'll do full video, and you can have. Yeah, we'll, just yeah. de- we'll we'll do a joint no, release. Well, we don't have to do that. Just have it on yours, and then like this one will be. Yeah, that would be weird, huh? It's like some people like doing that. I don't p- particularly want to. Be like dick riding. Kinda. It's like <laughs> it's almost like we docked on each other. We docked. Dunk. <laughs> yeah, it would just be better to like my audience goes to your podcast. Yep, and, yep. I mean, think about it. Like, I feel podca- like our podcasts are completely different. Yeah. Well, they they are different in a lot of ways, but. Our audiences cross over a lot. You 100%. know what I mean? Because they're, I can't make enough podcasts for every day of the week for someone to work. No. You know, and you can't, and Dan can't, and, and everybody can't do that. So what happens is we just all collectively make podcasts, which are different perspectives, different types of conversations. Yep. And it continues to fill the void of of just motorcycle content through audio yep. in, the, in that podcast. Through audio space. love. Yeah. We're fucking your ear pussies. <laughs> My ear got wet. <laughs> Hi, bud. All right, thanks for having me, brother. Appreciate you. Now you can hear us awkwardly talking until we walk into the other room. That was a good time. Thank you, Steve, for uh, sitting down and uh, giving me your Sunday to hang out, talk shit, and uh, get to know you a lot better, man. I really like this dude. And uh, you guys should be checking him out, too. Speed King Cycles. They got a podcast, like I said before. It's a great show. 
And I uh, want to thank you guys for listening to this one. And if you want to support us on a more intimate level, you can check out our Patreon, which is on our website, fastlifegarage.com. Uh, on the front page, there's a link to become a Patreon uh, supporter. And on our Patreon, what you get for doing that is you get the assurance of knowing that you're helping this podcast go places. That's number one. Number two is uh, we got content that we release on there that doesn't get released in all these podcast platforms. So if you like hearing my dumbass voice and uh, my great guests a little bit extra, you can check out some unreleased podcasts we have on there. We do a thing called Cold Snacks where it's pretty much just the homies talking. And we've had some good times on it. So if you guys want to check it out, you can go to our Patreon there. Also, I hope you guys are uh, you know planning to make the trip to the uh, Fast Life Camp Out, which is happening in, I think, less than three weeks now. Um, or right at three weeks, basically. It's going to be a good time, you guys. If you're not going to make it, I'm, you know, it sucks, but it really is a good show. And it's the most, like, it's the most down-to-earth kind of bike event you could probably ever tend, uh, attend. So, uh, I don't know. I love it. Everybody that goes loves it. And uh, once you go, you're kind of hooked. It's like you go and you get herpes and you're just stuck with it. You're always going to be coming back. It's probably not the best analogy to get you to come. But anyway, <sighs> I need to just stop right now while I'm ahead. Anyway, you guys have a great week. I'm going to come back real quick with another podcast. We actually have the Fast Life Campout podcast that we're going to be releasing probably Tuesday. So today's Monday. You'll be hearing that one Tuesday. And uh, that one's in video form, too, on our YouTube if you want to check it out. But anyway, you guys have a good Monday. Um, I said that kind of condescending. Anyway, you guys have a good day. We'll see you back. Peace.